guys. So, you guys have been asking for a story time for a very long time. And we got one for you. Uh, also, uh, if you're wondering, I know, I know, I know, I always sound kind of weird to you guys, but like, I'm, I sound particularly weird today because I'm actually dying. So I'm, I'm not that bad, but like, it's all in my face when it is. Uh, I've got a pound and a headache, I'm nose is blocked, and everything else that goes with it. So that's fun. So I don't know if I'm going to be on top form today. So yeah, Garbo, you're going to have to carry this, carry this for me. <laughs> not going to lie. You, you're going to have to like, lead it all. And also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, here, by the way. Also, I want to just say before we start, so Garbo, you're near finished. The veil lighters aren't you? They're like the core glow books, like more. Or less. Yeah. So, so the more I mean, they're more or less done. I'm always adding stuff to them in a good way. I'm always adding more items, more weapons, more cursed items, more beckoners, more drugs. Yeah. I'm, I'm always I, I'm always adding more things to them, and then hopefully, if PayPal puts my loan through eventually, I'll get more art done for them too. But this is one of those things. So uh, I've been talking about this for a long time, and I've always said Gar- the veil lighters system is perfect for. Your solid. So I'm just going to throw this up on screen, and that's a thing. Of course, um, setting has to work for the veil lighters because I don't want to get molested by Konami, which would be great. <laughs> you know, of all the companies that I don't want to get molested by, playing Konami's play top that list. What, what company? Konami finger my ass in a, in a fucking mall house parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what company would you say Garp would be the worst to get molested by? The U.S. government. Jeez. Oh, I mean, that's a pretty solid corporate company, if you ask me. Yeah. Like, you know, but, you know, it'd probably be like either. Uh, it, I'd, I'd be like Nintendo or fucking Hasbro. Yeah, I'd say so. Either way, either way, look, Ocean's 11 AD. When we jump into this story time before people complain on us, it's like, you guys aren't reading the thread, you guys are just talking. I'm sorry. Because it's really fucking threading, beauty. Oh, okay. I can't <laughs> oh, here, by the way, this is from an Axe campaign, by the way, so that's the thing. Uh, Axe. Axe. Conquer, conquer King. Anyway. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go play 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 DD5 ah, 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 ah. I love that. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know what I really want to do like a s I mean Mars Attacks is Mars Attacks. It's all I got, I got, I got, Yeah. I got. <laughs> anyway, look, let's do this. Let's do this. Alright. So ever been part of a thief campaign, TG? By request I'll be posting story time for my group's ongoing axe act act act. Thief campaign, aka Ocean's Eleven AD. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, I like the, I like the I like the AI. Here, this is perfect use of AI art. I have you know. Look at that. Uh, AI art is actually crushing actual art. This is a poor frog person crying yeah. online because the guy's job taken away. Right. Okay. I'm just gonna put it out here right now. So see, Death March. I offered the artist 50% to do the format and all the artwork for it, which, because I really want a lot of art, and after two years, more or less, uh, the guys dropped out, so... Yeah, that's a thing. Like, you know, I don't, like, it's more practicality for me, but, like, I'm not going to get into the whole AI art thing. Let's just keep... For this campaign, we've been using the Axe 2 playtest rules and the system's default setting of the R and Empire. Just like my story time last weekend, I'll be mentioning mechanics when it helps explain things. That's how I roll. This is a long one. Fair warning. Oh, PCs... Is- r- is this the guy that we did before? Do you remember we did at the story time? The, the, the gladiator thing? Yeah, well, is this the same guy? Might be, because it was an axe campaign as well. Either way, either way. Uh, Rabbis Phalus, thief, trap special. I almost said rap specialist. <laughs> trap specialist. Yo. Uh, what was that one video? Like the fucking, the, like the fucking Snoop Dogg, right? Yeah, thing yeah. I don't know where he got the rapper. <laughs> I, I don't know. And party leader. <laughs> Slav, Slav, thief, lock specialist. Yeah, that's on the nose. Oh, I, oh, oh, I thought Slav was the, was the character, was a class. I mean, like Slav yeah. and thief. Kind of. Slav. Slav and thief. Uh, I, I wish to that. play level five Slav. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, Janice, assassin, a thief fighter class, Orenthal Jelani, freebooter, a thief fighter class, thief fighter glass cannon class from the Ivory Kingdoms. Sounds kind of racist, bro. Ivory Kingdoms? Hmm. Ivory Kingdom? Hmm. Ivory Supremists? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Colth, Elven Courtier, gay, a thief partial <laughs> caster. Uh, my notes for season one are sparse, but it was just Ravis and Slav doing a B and E of a small mining settlement's bank. With a mere five HP between us, we did it as thieves, quietly breaking in through a blocked up. <laughs> I hate my Discord. Gonna be blocked up, thinking something about something else. <laughs> breaking in through a blocked up grate and completely avoiding combat. It was a tense session. We had to balance being fast in and out of character to be gone before the guard patrol showed, while not missing traps or, for, or easy loop by going too fast and not making any noise to draw the guards easily. Slept up once and almost got nailed by a poison dart trap, but we cleared out most of the vault and bailed in time. We both leveled good times. 
Ravis and Slav celebrated with a two-month bender across the empire. We blew most of our newly stolen cash. Hey, that, Wasting... <laughs> that's that's Good. that's what they did in Kudan. Then they get just scooped. They just get going. Yeah. Up. I mean, like that's look, look, that's standard, doesn't it? Okay, so we are no longer just a pair. Hold on, oops. Okay. Um. Wasting for do wasting cash for no in character benefit gives ninety percent of its value as a reserve XP for your next PC, so you don't have to start over. Oh, they oh you buy XP in this fucking system, Max? Yeah, it must be. I mean, it's OSR, so well again, thingy said like you know, like Alex says, it's technically not OSR, but people would call it. I don't even know what OSR means these days, guys. I I honestly, I'm, I'm at the point where it's like, oh, this is pretty cool. Uh, some genre, it's like this makes no sense. Anything like, I think it's a marketing term at this point. <laughs> okay, I see here. Um, we give. Given our band and name, the Scattered Sons, since incorporating us as a venturing party, we had done no dungeon delving, and that was not about to change. We were no longer as a pair. Of, well, is not is a bank vault not a dungeon delve in itself? It's just a different scope of dungeon. You're no longer in a cave. You're in a more or less a. a I mean, a bank is still an area full of rooms, much like a dungeon would be. It's, it's simply you're simply changing locales and venues and the general shape of the dungeon, yeah. but it's still a dungeon. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that. You know, it, it's, it's a bunny I, ears dungeon. I, I, please don't. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that that's been brought into my vocabulary. Bunny ears. I've never, I've never uh, heard bunny that. ears. <laughs> uh, bunny ears. It's like quotations, but I'm. Oh, yeah. oh, you know what? You know what? Okay, you know what? You know what? Really annoys me. Americans instead of saying full stop, they said period, and I, I don't know why. That just angers me. It just does. It just does. Okay. How dare you say your punctuation mark? You fucking chaos and have it. Just, just say uh, full stop. That's gay. Period. <laughs> right. Okay. Look, let's keep going. Shit. That's. Uh, she's bleeding monthly. Period. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. We were no longer just a pair of grubby thieves. We've ad we'd added more grubby people to our group. Three full members of the PCs above, and, ha and half a dozen henchmen who were a mix of fighters and thieves, plus a priestess. That fucking priestess. Oh. Very lawful, slumming it hard by even associating with us. We left her to hang out in the nearby town of Sigadanos. Because the rest of us were casing the Imperial Frontier Fort of Turos Tim, hoping for our next big score. DM, there's also a nearby dungeon of Sakara that you guys hear rumors about while at the fort. You could go poke around there if you want. Party, Beastmen will eat you if they catch you. The Legate will just hang us. He might even give us a trial first. We're staying right here. <laughs> no, fuck no. you, DM. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a no from me. I said right the bank heist, DM. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's just not what we're going to do today, guys, okay? I don't know. You know the problem is, I just don't really face this problem because, like, whenever I'm going on games, it's mostly for, like, test play purposes. So I just say to them, it's like, look, guys, I really need you to, like, go here and, like, interact with it. You know? <laughs> I, I, at least I'm open about my rules, okay? Like, you know, because most of the time it is for play testing purposes, you know? So. You guys have rules? Saying <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, like, last, last, last Friday, the guy was like, I want to break this. <laughs> <laughs> the big old Goliath player. I'm gonna break this uh, this femboy elf's back like fucking Bane. I'm like, just roll for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. All right, fine. Oh yeah, well, he, has, okay. he has one HP left. Just like, just give me a brawn check. Oh, uh, a 34. Cool. You briefly break this dude in half. Oh, I mean, I've got this one guy. He's funny. I really, I really like him. I think he's a really funny guy. Um, he comes off with some good ones, but for some reason, he's got this. <laughs> right, okay, so there's a pit in the Bastard Princess where uh, you meet a hag, and the hag can grant you certain abilities or certain stuff in exchange for, like, your soul or whatever. So, I mm -hmm. mean, the I mean, I mean, I'm... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can actually say I make this on YouTube or not. <laughs> to be honest with you. Well, either way, uh, yeah, uh, I made him do things. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't I made him, dude. He was more than happy. He was like, yeah, yeah, I'll go for that. Like, you know, like all I'm saying is the player's always up for it. Like, you know, I think he's a funny guy. You know what I mean? But again, this is mm. it's one of those ones where it's like, should I be live streaming games on YouTube? Probably not. No, I don't think my, <laughs> I don't think the the way I play my games. Oh no, are, 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 is not meant for public consumption that's all i can say you know that also it's youtube you know i i don't want to like i, I just want people play the games in peace you know saying I mean? twitch ain't too bad yeah that's about <clears> all bad. right so we spent the whole game session the, the full month in character just encasing the fort and preparing for the heist we intended to do it as thieves again so we went all in on the recon and planning which ended up being a lot of fun the DM was using a very detailed module, AX, AX1 Sinister Stone of Sakara, so he let us know there would be no ass pulling on his part. We'd be up against the module as written. Full simulationism. Si sim simulate. Simulation. That, that word's dumb. Full simulation. <laughs> 
The fort was said the fort was sighted on top what the fort was sighted at the top of a tall stone plateau with a 15 foot stall won't with 15 foot stone walls and three gatehouses. We would come in during the day for business, but had to be out by nightfall when the gates were shut. It was way under staff of less than 100 troops at the at the moment. That meant their guard rotations were a lot lighter than they otherwise might have been. Our casing of the place pointed to three buildings as likely to have descent to have decent loot inside: the headquarters, with the fort's payroll, the legate's villa, and the magister's arcane lab. The payroll sounded like the best bet for a big haul, and importantly, we could look get, we could get a look inside the HQ without it being suspicious. Between a few looks and buying some drinks at the tavern, we found that the payroll was kept at the rear of the HQ on the other side of the locked iron gate, which the key kept by the quartermaster. It was also guarded by a pair of hard-looking troops, including some of the fort seasoned veterans. But once the fort was locked down at night, that went down to just a single elite treasury guard with a normal and the normal crowd of people and the rest of the HQ dropped to a pair of patrolling guards. We decided we get to the head yeah, we decided we get well, we decided we need to get the quartermaster's key. Otherwise we'd be spending a bunch of time trying to pick the gates lock right out in the open. Slav's useless general proficiency of craft. Lock making got put to full effect here. Ravis lifted the key while the quartermaster was in the bathhouse. After a couple of failed attempts, Slav got a good wax mold made. The key was quickly returned with the quartermaster none the wiser he made a proper copy of it later. We need some sort of distraction. Didn't take us long to think of one either. We st- we'd start a fire. <laughs> never... <laughs> look, that works 90% of the we'll time. We'll just burn the rats out, bro. It's fine. I mean, like, look, look, it's not going to get out of control. Trust me, guys. Honestly, the amount of games that I've gone and they've just set everything on fire is actually kind of shocking. Not going to lie. Um, if we go to a town, I would say there's at least a 30 to 40% chance that the players will just burn the burn the town Sir, town down. you won't leave... <laughs> Sir, you won't leave the orphanage. I have a solution <laughs> to this problem. <laughs> look, look, I don't know why. I, look, if the players want to do it, I'll let them go for it, okay? It's their choice. You know? Sir, the BBEG has found rifle sanctuary in this church. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Sounds like a you problem. <laughs> yeah. Pulls up torch. Um, <laughs> the granary was a the granary was a prime option. DM, you realize that would almost certainly cause the fall cause the fort to fall to beastmen. And the whole borderlands region falling to suit falling suit afterwards. I mean, do it if you want, but you're getting an alignment change to chaotic. I mean, and quickly <laughs> ruled out in favor of the easily burned hay supply in one of the cavalry stables. We're not evil. We just want to get get rich quick with a low risk of death. I mean, like if you're playing, if you're gonna have to be chaotic within reason. You know, like let's be serious. Hey, professionals have standards. Right? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Fair enough, fair enough. To stay unnoticed during the heist, we also get disguises set up. Ravis puts the word out he needed a henchman good with disguises and was able to find a thief in Sia Danos who fit the bill. Second-hand Imperial Solar armor and gear was bought for the two fighter henchmen and the clothes that would pass for off-duty soldiers for the rest. We also need a quiet way to in and out. Uh, we also need, also need a quiet way in and out in oh hold on fuck me we also need a quiet way in and a fast way out visitors were logged when they arrived and left so trying to walk in and hide until nightfall would get noticed wagons at the gate were too carefully checked for us to try smuggling people in and tunneling in was completely out of the question we were pretty sure we could just climb the wall at a less patrolled spot between the towers and drop a rope ladder for our people who weren't skilled climbers it would mean ascending the plateau at night but with enough moonlight we could probably pull off the climb unnoticed we went over our equipment and a fine tooth comb to only to carry only the essentials the skies as armor a few choice weapons and tools the copied key rope and rope ladder a couple flasks of military oil and lots of large sacks <laughs> <For the stupid laughs> yeah. you, you, like, you know look, it's very important because we have to have the swag written on the sack okay you got you guys don't have money bag coin dollar slot bags <laughs> the Wait, fuck? what that's you like- <laughs> real real thieves <laughs> Um, we needed to be able to carry a lot while not getting slowed down. Then we dropped some cash buying every light riding horse and light war horse in San Odinos and saddles for them too. The night of the heist, one of the henchmen would wait with them saddled at the bottom of the plateau for a quick escape. Preparations complete. Ah. Heist begins. Did, did you know? What was that? What? Oh, that's, that's fucking Game of Thrones. Yeah. Did you know that fire kills civilians? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Oh, crisis actors. actors. <laughs> Controlled demolition. Controlled demolition. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, look, look. Did you know that the dragons were firing, like, fog missiles? <laughs> look, you know Christ what? I can't, I can't make them jokes, okay? I can't make the jokes, okay? This isn't gobbledygook. Keep going. Who do you think you are, <laughs> Alex Jones? Here, did um, I show you? I, I, I feel like a lot of people don't know this. I mentioned it at the time. So I'm, like, one of my old videos, like, one of my first videos I posted on YouTube is actually in a scientific study about Alex Jones. Have you seen it? Scientific not, study? Yeah, I'm not even joking here. Let me, let me get it up for you. Let me show you this. And it, it's actually, pull up my tweeters. No, I'll show you. It's pretty, like, it's one of those ones where it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, let me see it. Here we go. Right, so, um, Thero Guys in the Oh, alcohol. Okay, I saw your post on this, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're fucking cited. <laughs> yeah, I'm cited. Like, I don't think I should be getting cited. So, yeah, there you go. My see. source, I made it the fuck up. <laughs> My source, um, I, I just put, like, a load of clips together of, like, Alex Jr. and, like, mathy shit, not gonna lie. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of interesting, though, but it, it's like, whatever you think about it, it's like, you yeah. Got, I, you got cited in a Duke press now. I mean, like, I should not be someone who's being cited for, like, scientific research purposes. My source is this Irish mad lad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. You know what? After. You know what? The ones that I always find really, it, like, I don't know what it's like for Americans, but like, you need to be like an upstanding member of society to sign like sign like uh, passports. Like you're over here, you need to get two people, and they need to be someone that like either works for the government or owns their own business, or you know what I mean, something like that. And because I'm down as self, I'm a soul creator. I'm actually like I'm on paper, I'm an upstanding member of society, which is like uh, I don't know. I mean, that guy's not gonna lie. <laughs> Oh, fuck. I'm going to say out front here, my court order, Psyche Val came back squeaky clean. All oh, right, that's Chad, good. I need y'all. <laughs> yeah, like, we're not going to spoil it. Yeah, so actually, it was actually a glowing review. Mm. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He seems very creative. <laughs> He's an avid writer. I'm like, hell yeah, I am, brother. <laughs> oh, that's nice. You know what I mean? It's always yeah. good when you get like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually insane, you know? Well, it was kind of weird how, like, the, the psych guy who was ordered by the court to view me was, like, he had, like, a, like, a leather jacket and an earring in his ear. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> I mean, like, hey, like, hey, man, I'm your, I'm your evaluator. How you doing? Who the hell did you, did you eat the other psychiatrist? What's the, who are you? I mean, like, it's the type of people that get into psychiatry, though. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, let's be serious. So, like, do you get angry easily, or are you more like a chill guy? <laughs> I was like, who are you? <laughs> I'm gonna put that as Garbo. Yeah, you do. <laughs> well, I don't know if you get angry or not, but it's more your, your willingness to fight with random people on the internet <laughs> is far superior to mine because I just don't have it in me. I, I just look at comments. He says, you're not prone to anger, but you are far more willing to fight. It's like, isn't that kind of a clash? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I would say you, you definitely love fighting with like randomers on the internet. I'm like, He's like I, I just, I don't, bro, I don't want to. I'm not angry, but I do want to fight you. Get over <laughs> yeah. here. Well, I don't know, like, I'm, like, whatever you're into, like, I don't know. I just don't have, see whenever I look at stuff like that. I, mean, I just look at it and I think for a minute, it's like, you know what? I'm not even gonna bother like back to that. It's not worth it. It's just gonna. Then, then there's me, you. Well, I'm. <laughs> just gonna get up getting banned if i like back to someone that's a problem I'm, like, I'm at the point where it's like i'm sick of having accounts banned on me Ugh, it's just look anyway look back to the story the heist begins the heist begins i'm so tired of being banned why are you booting me <laughs> <laughs> uh after sleeping all day we set out in the human night with a half moon and five pcs and three henchmen began scrolling began scaling the eastern end of the bluff this took them hours even with our skilled climbers setting up lines for the rest to follow we still were, we still were trying to do it in the dark and stay quiet about it, but eventually you pulled it off, and the party was atop the plateau, taking a breather in donning disguises. But who was Don? And why is he disguised? <laughs> we got to the <laughs> we got the party over a shadow spot. We got whoop. We got the party over a shadowy spot off the east wall without guards noticing. We left the rope letter tied to the wall and tucked it out of sight for a quick getaway, then dropped into the courtyard. The party waited. The party waited in a quiet spot while Ravis and Janus walked over to the west end of the stables, waited for the coast to be clear, and then tossed a torch helpfully, lighting the nearby pathway up into the open hayloft. Then we tossed two flasks of military oil up there for good measure and hustled off. We rejoined the rest of the party by the granary while flames started pouring out of the stable. Slav saw the saw the pair of roaming guards from the HQ run out to join the rest of the fort and responding to the fire once the general alarm got raised. With the coast mostly clear, we scooted into the HQ. The treasury guard was still at his post, and he twigged to something being off about us. No surprise round for us, but Janus, the assassin, won the initiative and just popped the guard in the dome with an arrow. <laughs> hey, show him off about you guys. Oop. 
<laughs> arrow <Elliot>. dong <laughs> yeah i had i had a similar problem i uh this was i think who was it was thingy um mr v was gone and uh we had to go up the magic shops we did and we set up like uh Okay, I can't tell you what I can't I can't put out on YouTube what what the diversion tactic was, but we end up uh, going through the roof and it, uh, did, it, it didn't involve a blow or a, or a fucking hand job. No, knowing you, Nick, or some weird shit like that, like oh yeah, you want to stretch? You know, shuck you. Well, okay, so there's, well, this game would have been in like twenty twenty one, I think. And um, what was like really happening? Like, was there big protests happening? Like twenty 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 one? That we're like, oh, oh I see. Yeah, yeah, it was, so we set up one of those sort of protests. We'll make the <laughs> goblins rise up against the proletarian elves. <laughs> yeah, so we set up that out, out the front of the, the the magic shop, and either way, either way, I I I, I end up going up a peg there, gone with salt. But yeah, I still had shit like some woman in the face with shit salt, and I, I killed her by accident. <laughs> Well, like it was a mistake, okay? We were trying to go inside. As you do. She, yeah, As we, you do. Well, I didn't mean for her to... Look, I didn't mean for her to see me, okay? I didn't mean for it to happen. I'm sorry, crying I mean, over his bloody woman's head. Well, we were, we were aim... Like, you know, I was... I, we I'm were sorry, aim, Wilson! Look, we were aiming for a complete covert. You know, no... Like, you know, no one even realized we were there. All that sort of stuff. You know, that's Remember, what... Remember, no fatalities. Kills woman. God damn it. <laughs> God damn <laughs> Yeah, we were... I'm, I'm not even joking. We were really in the sky. Like, not even, like, two minutes. Like, I'm not even joking. It was bad. Anyway, anyway, let's keep going. Ugh, okay, so Janus kills the guard. Target saves or is stunned for one round. <coughs> the rest of us ran up and encircled the day's guard to club him, to club him unconscious with our weapon hilts, thanking our luck for the easy takedown. <laughs> that poor guard. <laughs> Fuck shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> Motherfucker doing her job. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. uh, the key had us past the door in an instant, and we left one of our fighter henchmen in the same armor standing post at the guard's old spot. Everyone else went into the trap door behind the statue. We shut the gate and the trap door behind us and, and then tied and gagged the guard once we were out of sight. It was looting time. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Putting your own guard in. Like, you know, the yeah. police. Yeah, that's actually a pretty sweet idea. Well, thanks to the D, I'm like, okay, this this guy goes knows nothing about guard culture. Like, hey, were you here for Roderick's birthday? Yeah, I love birthdays. There is no fucking Roderick. Kill that man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, look, it's better than nothing. Better than nothing. Yeah. Inside the basement treasury room were about a dozen locked chests. Ravis was a trap expert, went from the chest to chest, doing a one-round hasty trap-breaking check for each. There just wasn't time for a more methodical inspection. Slav, the lock expert, followed right behind him, doing hasty popping of the locks of the chest locks. Meanwhile, Orenthal Jelani cracked the more troublesome locks with a crowbar and mallet based. Yeah. <laughs> The, clo the closed trap door, empty building, and chaos outside meant noise was no was no worry this time. Inside the chest was a mixture of gold, silver, and copper coins. A lot of them, thousands of GP worth, the Force Imperial payroll, and the soldiers' individual secured personal savings. Aw, oh, dude. Oh, man. Man. I guess little Timmy ain't getting that surgery <laughs> he needs this year. <laughs> Oh, you're stealing their pensions and what? That's bad, huh? My 401k, no! <laughs> no! You're like the government. <laughs> <laughs> oh, My social right. securities. Yeah, that's uh, bad. We, <laughs> we started yeah. dumping handfuls of silver and gold into sacks as fast as we could. We counted and split it later. The copper coins weren't worth the time or wait. We had to get moving. Everyone grabbed a sack. We left the guard down there and shutting the gate behind us, we booked it to where we entered the fort. Ravis zipped up the interior of the wall and dropped the rope ladder for the rest of us to get up, then tossed the regular rope off the other side and tied it off. But while he was doing this, he got spotted. Two off-duty soldiers coming around the wall spotted us, saw us, a bunch of guys they didn't recognize, especially climbing a rope ladder on the, on the inside of the oh, wall while no. carrying a bunch of sacks, and started sh <laughs> Those sacks got a money shine on it! They're thieves! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of clinking noises. <laughs> yeah, clink, clink, clink. Yeah. And started shouting. Ravis tried to play it off and rolled pretty well for reaction, but my actual words were not helpful. And what I meant to say, the legate sent us up here to throw water down the stable. What actually said, the legate, the legate sent us up here to throw fire down the stable. Uh, <laughs> she. She. Okay, let's see what happens. How, how badly does this unfold? Janus, Orenthal, Jelani, and Colt decided they'd deal with the problem more directly and dropped the troopers with a volley of arrows, ending our short lit our short lived bloodless streak. We got everyone over the wall, ran around the base of it to the south side, and then hauled at then hauled ass scooted ass scooted it's a weird then one. hauled ass scooted around the base of it oh, that's not okay i made hold ass and just that is chicken fried <laughs> as fuck my friend and hauled ass down the ramp towards our waiting horses the southern gatehouse guard spotted us but we're already too far away for them to make for too far away for them for them to make accurate shots 
<laughs> I I see I see what he's trying to do mentally yeah. to wait for them for them to make shots, but for them anyway. Yeah, Stopping just long enough to drop some cattle traps behind us, though with our light with our fast light horses and the cast of the fort pursuit was unlikely. We mounted in vamoosed. We rode all the way through the night until we got to see Adanos with just a couple neg 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 that's that word I hate negligible neg 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 <laughs> fuck it Cheeky couple boy. unimportant traveler encounters on the way that we blew right past neg negligible there we go I got it it was a so it was a sizable haul ten thousand eight hundred GP in total nice even after taking expenses off the top it was one thousand seven hundred fifty five GP to each PC. Janice leveled to second, and Kolth and or Orenthal Jelani almost did, and Ravis and Slav hit fourth. Ravis's priestess henchwoman was furious, <laughs> oh, quitting no. on the spot as soon as she found out about the heist. Served me right hiring a lawful hench in a thief party, but at least she wouldn't be reporting us to the authorities. Ravis, feeling generous for some, for, from success, gave her 500 GP for the poor or to buy incense for the temple or whatever, as long as she said some prayers for him too. Me, me buying more reserve XP. She responded that if she ever saw him injured on the battlefield in the future, that she remembered to heal him, though I'll make it hurt after. <laughs> hmm. I mean, like, why, why, why would you bother her? Like, you know, why would you bother bringing in something like this? If you Better hire a lawful priest. Nothing good can nothing go wrong here. Yeah, I mean, like... I don't know. I think you're just asking for, like, bother. Like, you know, look, look, look. It's only about her time before she tights on you. All right? That's that's what it sounds like to me. I mean, like, if you never heard the song Whiskey in the Jar, that's all I'm going <laughs> to say. Are you tired of overreaching and overbearing censorship on important and non-important issues? Well, you're in luck. For just seven fifty a month, you can get access to over 60 hours of completely uncensored and unhinged schizo takes from Megan and James. From I mean, us. I mean, look, um, it's 60 hours at the minute. Every week we do a minimum of like three hours. Yep. So, you know. You get a lot of content. There's a lot on there. A lot of content. Ranging from... Or even, yes, they are that spicy. Even the name of the topic must be censored. You can't even, we can't even promote it on YouTube. <laughs> you can stream or download all the videos from Gumroad and cancel your membership at any time. Though new videos every week on average come to two to three hours long so we can really go in depth on any topic and we are not strangled by the YouTube algorithm. That's a big issue I always find. Yeah. If we can be open and uncensored and not have to worry about any of that. If you want to talk about a subject, YouTube really promotes, oh, you're going to have to get that done in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But on this, we can really take our time and really delve yep. into it. And most weeks we do bonus off-topic videos. And yes, we even have a teaser video you can download for free from nickbeardia.co.uk. In it, we talk about Northern Ireland for four and a half hours. <laughs> I don't even think we're scratched. Sorry. For no, guys. it's to try and help you understand who we are as people, our worldview, and how we can kind of be aliens to most people. If any of that sounds good to you, go ahead, links down below, and let's get back to the video. Also, and um, the winner of the daily giveaway is this guy. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Look, anyway, uh, in for a chance to win, all you got to do is like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, automatically entered in. And to claim the prize, you just send an email to neckbeardycontact at gmail.com. Let's get back to the video. After boosting the Turos Tim treasury, we rode off a day or so later for the city of Cypharon. Fucking fantasy names. The original cap, this would be like Sweetwater. <laughs> the regional capital of the Borderlands. We pooled 5,000 GP between us to buy a villa in the Plaza District to serve as a public headquarters for the Scattered Sons Adventuring Company and the less public hideout for the newly founded Scattered Sons Criminal Syndicate. <laughs> With a hideout, we can now start doing hijinks. Since these are important within the campaign and will be mentioned a lot, it's time for rules explanation. Hijinks and Acts 2 are basically a bunch of different abstracted crimes that thieves and the like can do during downtime with their thief skills. If successful, they can net the perpetrator cash, rumors or blackmail-worthy secrets, treasure maps, and so on. If they fail by a 14 plus or a nat 1 on the roll, the perpetrator gets caught and charged with a crime. With a roll for severity depending on the type of hijink pooled. Typically, the riskier the hijink is, the more it pays out for success. A major hijink gone wrong can lead to the perpetrator being killed or worse. 
I getting mean, expelled, or getting killed, or worse, expelled. Oh no! Fucking, <laughs> fucking Hermione, Hermione Grange over here, killed or worse. <laughs> what, what the fuck does that mean? Uh, honestly, Axe has got goals for everything, so it does. Honestly, if you haven't checked it out, I'd highly recommend checking it out. See whenever my book comes in, I'm really thinking about the campaign with it. Uh, the the problem is pretty much whenever I get it, like I don't get to play as much as what I would like. So the vast majority of the times, whenever I do play, I'm like test playing stuff. Uh, but I do really want to run an Axe campaign. The worm of fantasy <laughs> sentence, what I I I have no idea. I think it would work perfectly, so it would. But anyway, anyway, let's keep going. Let's keep going. <coughs> I can see. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, overall, they are a great way for thieves to get extra cash or otherwise accomplish illegal activities for other ends, as long as your luck holds out. Most of the party PCs started doing carousing, a low risk and low reward hygiene for info about the city's underworld situation. If they could score some cash by fixing gladiator fights. <laughs> They got the skinny about the quiet, ongoing turf war between Cypharon's two major syndicates, the Agor, the Argor, fucking, the family and the Sand and the Bones. The Argo, the Argolians? The family, we're, we're called, called them the family from here on out. The Argos had the line on smuggling and were more genteel, or were the more genteel syndicate who had some sort of, sort of thing for elves. Sand and Bones were a newer group, very much on the brutal side, and specialized in racketeering and other nastier methods. Carousing for info was a nice one all, but Ravis decided on something riskier. He'd go big or go home. Word was a group of adventurers had just recovered a prized piece of ancient elven artwork and he was going to lift it, doing a stealing hygiene for valuable goods. Since this was dangerous and could result in him getting killed if caught, he spent almost all his cash to, f- to first enjoy a week of the best that lic- licentious entertainment Cypharon had to offer. He dick's gonna Banking fall off, mate. <laughs> he, he go to dick around. <laughs> yeah. Banking another 900 reserve XP. He needn't have worried, though, since his luck was good. 17 days later, Rafus was handing that art over to an un- underworld fence for a whopping 5,000. Oh. 600 GP. Nice. Very well. The last hijink single handedly made Rav is a, th- a fifth level f- a fifth a fifth level thief. A fifth level thief who had once who had somehow managed to not personally use a weapon during this entire career. Aside, our group didn't really use Oh, okay. Our group didn't really use to require PCs to pay for reserve XP in previous campaigns, but it was actually fun deciding how we wanted the PCs to blow all that money, even though it wasn't going to benefit your PC, it's still going to make impact in the setting. In Ravis's case, he was a proper thief, and that meant he was superstitious as it comes. He'd had a nice streak of good luck lately, and decided he'd better take some steps to keep that going. So he made an extremely generous anonymous donation of half his recent take to a priestess of, Cal- of Kalpha, the settings goddess of fortune and wealth, and the dead, split between the main temple and the caretakers of the lesser shrines. With that additional reserve XP banked, I had enough to re-roll as a level 4 thief on PC death, which, as you'll see, played into my risk tolerance. Despite those donations, Rafa's luck did not stay good. Not even a few days later, he woke up in a dark room with weight, with water being tossed on his face, tightly bound to a heavy wooden chair in an underground room, gagged, and with a bullseye lantern being shown in his face. <laughs> Man, it's gonna end up like casino real with the fucking ball bag. <laughs> Where's the money, Lebowski? You know that kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> the ball, the ball bag. Yeah, do you remember that the, the loop with the big knot? He's just whacking him in the balls. <laughs> Do you remember that? Jesus you know the thing was, see whenever that came out, it's like, wait, is this really where we're going with Indiana Jones? Oh, not Indiana Jones, sorry. Um, James Bond, like, you know, I'm used to, like, lasers and stuff. Like, this seems a bit low-tech, you know, but it was actually, you know what, it kind of worked out. I actually really liked Casino Gale. I've got lasers. I've got a little <laughs> ball of sand inside that's for a rope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's Whack. effective. <laughs> but balls can be like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns out when you squeeze them, they, they want to talk. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> the last thing he could remember was being was an incident of being jumped and put into a sleeper hold, and it soon became clear that it had been by the that had, that had been by the Argolian family's best kidnapper. The Argo family is the biggest syndicate of, of Cypharon. It didn't take long for his captor to speak. I suggest you listen to my offer and then take it. We bought your skin from the perfect. Oh, from the prefect for a bargain. So now you owe us. And as per the agreement, you owe, you owe him also through us. I'm going to ungag you and you'll tell me which debt you'd rather pay pay down first or neither, in which case I'll let my associates do their thing. Which of these debts is larger? Ours is likely the shorter outing. You're welcome to pay us the money it'll, you, you just cost us plus a processing fee, let's say 6,000 GP, and then you just owe the prefect. But your talents would be useful in other deeper parts of the city to pay off the debt to the outfit, which is why we bought your debt in the first place. After that job with a certain elven in after that job with a servant elven antiquity, you came to the attention of a few people. And what does the prefect want with want from me? 
Nothing po- nothing too big. Something about clearing the beastman from Dragon's Tor. He's going to... Oh, mate. <laughs> Is the DM going, please do the adventure? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like... A- uh, you know what? It's not a bad way. To, like, gotta beat the players. You team. could, you could do a heist, or you could do the fucking dungeon. You know, you could do this book that I bought. You know, I did, I did buy this adventure. Can we please do this adventure, guys? It's the main reason why I started the this dude, campaign. This is please. a creative. This is a, it's a creative railroad. I gotta say, yeah, either I mean, uh... do this or I'll fucking kill you. Head is outside. Do this or I'll fucking kill your character. Yeah, I said, do the adventure, bigot. <laughs> Kills character. Yeah. <laughs> It's more of a shell company. Uh, <laughs> so we aside, we were tracked down by a temporary player taking the role of the investigating officer. While we while we didn't exactly leave a lot of tracks, we did leave some witnesses who could attest to there being an elf, a dwarf, henchman, and someone from the Ivory Kingdom, basically Africa. Interesting. Ivory Kingdoms, Africa. Interesting. I'm in the group. In total, fairly distinctive. He figured out right away where our immediate destination after the heist would be. Ciadanos was the only really good option as far as a nearby town. Once he confirmed that we'd gone there first and already skipped town, he didn't have a lot of clues since we just laid low a few days while we were there. So we just reached out to the Imperial Criminals' contacts in the regional capital city and asked if they could, if if they'd seen a group matching our description. This is where we could have ex- ex- exercised some more discretion. Rather than just riding the town as a group all at once, we should have traveled solo or in pairs and generally laid low for a while, but we didn't do that. Instead, we splashed around a lot of money since getting into town. And I'd sold the Arg- Argolians and an elven artifact that I stole from an adventuring company. So when the in- inquiry came, why, well, yes, they had heard of Ravis Valus. <laughs> How they? What? Uh, kidnapping hijinks can be- can't be used against a PC or suspicious character per the rules of the DM. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. You can't kidnap PCs. That's illegal, DM. <laughs> I make the fucking rules. Yeah. Uh, actually, DM, uh, you can't kidnap a PC. <laughs> How would you mm. suck my dick, player? <laughs> yeah. like um, you- actually, DM, um, uh, you can't just take me off, guys. Uh, please, please be nice to me. Please. I don't I'm, know. Uh, I'm a soft little cinnamon roll, and you're making me angry, DM. <laughs> it's very, uh, I'm not even going to get a dick, so, uh, look, keep going, <laughs> keep going. Uh, okay, let's see here. Um... But the DM decided that this was a special case, and I was ex- well, and I was acting remotely cautiously. Not unreasonable, so I got pinched walking around town. The temporary player friend of ours was extremely smug about how little time it took us to trek us down. <laughs> Smugging. The first thing Ravis did was was once untied was track down a certain someone. He'd previously tasked his venture henchman, Azerol the Glib, to hunt down some hard as nails men who could serve as bodyguards and toughs for the scattered sons. Technically, he found that sort of seasoned warrior, warrior for hire, but it was a paladin, paragon of law, the sort who the scattered sons wouldn't normally even want to be in the same room with. But that was exactly the man Ravis needed now, because between the map and a bit of his info in his captor had handed him for his new job, he was going to go deep underneath the city where the dead walked, the sort of thing he and his crew preferred to stay well away from. He hit things off well enough, but the paladin could see exactly who he was dealing with. I won't sign on with your outfit. Aminar has tasked me with his holy mission to purge the wretched undead creatures that lurk in the deep bowels of the city. But I might, but I myself need someone to watch my back in those deaths, to pay my expenses for the month and give me a full share of any treasure we find, and we'll make the descent together. But afterwards, our paths split. Ravis couldn't have asked for a more agreeable deal if it had been handed him on a... Yeah. Ravis couldn't have asked for a more agreeable deal if it had been handed to him on a silver platter. Oh, I suggest you and, you br- you and your men bring fire. Lots of fire. Azarol got an order that very hour to buy ep- every flask of military oil <laughs> in the city and every flask of holy water, too, for good measure. Bad Jesus does this Christ. go? You, yeah. this, How bad does this go? You know it's going to end up badly. Or it might end up great. Who knows? You, really just, can't, you just can't cross players with fire, though. Two days later, Ravis and the other PCs, a trio of henchmen and the Paladin, were readying for the descent. The Paladin was just looking to find anything undead in its existence, but the rest on a specific, but the rest on a specific mission of retrieval. A wealthy and probably perverted per- perverted patrician had gotten a map to a tomb containing a chthonic item called the Cauldron of Nazga's Plenty and wanted it badly. The party headed down a hidden sewer entrance. The fire proved immediately useful as a green slime attempted to drop on us, but we just stepped back and burned it away. The party got down to the area of the map and poked around in the area. Well, in, in the area they've been directed, finding the graves of servants and retainers of an ancient pair of apparently incestuous elven siblings on uh, brand. Check site, yeah. 
While Ravis scattered ahead, the others began looting some entombed bodies on the wall. Every time. In the, pro <laughs> in the process, they noticed that the plaster of the wall was oddly bloated with water. In surmise, it was a false wall. With four crowbars between them, dismantling the false, the false wall took only a couple of turns, and upon returning, Revis asked the plowed and the sense for evil in the room that led to us. Yes, there's evil in there, two strong ores. Thus forewarned, the group was able to be well prepared. They got out the holy water. Kolth cast a spell, Bane rune on their weapons, making them effectively magic weapons with, versus, a, versus a specific creature type, in this case undead, and inspired courage in the fighter henchmen who could go berserk did. They breached and found a pair of mummies locked in embrace. Gross. I wonder who <laughs> that could be. When you're a mummy trying to fuck and some people just bark <clears throat> in your fucking bedroom. Hey, yo! <laughs> no! Hey, a mummy in here! <laughs> um, the mummies seemed surprised by their entrance and the group made the most of it, crashing to their room with arrows and holy water flasks soaring through the air. Oh, they're actually enemies, are they? I, thought they uh, I mean, I mean, now they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when... <laughs> This picture like these mummies just just trying to bang and this fucking wall comes down and those spurs come running through with fucking fire flasks. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Gotta do what you gotta do. Oh fuck me, I'm actually dying, swab. <laughs> Makes comments, dies. Yeah. Um, the female mummy was the first to go, cut down before she could even react. The hail of enchanted arrows and holy water tearing her to bits, including a crit arrow backstab by the assassin. As the male mummy turned to attack with his raging boner clefted, several of the party were paralyzed in fear by his boner, but the berserking fighter didn't even notice as he drove home the halberd thrust for a max damage 13 point hit. The mummy was finally able to strike back, but the paladin kept it hemmed into the corner, and a fourth level paladin just laughs when a mummy hits him for five damage spotting the cauldron in the room why is the okay cauldron room fucking mm. mummies what what was in that cauldron dude what the <laughs> i mean look the pervert well i mean so some perverted politician wants this cauldron which belonged to this incest incestuous couple it no, nothing good could come from this cauldron just just put that out there <laughs> nothing good nothing good this, okay uh spotting the cauldron in the room ravis quickly popped it into a sack before very awkwardly quit before any awkward questions might be asked by the party's temporary member. A second volley of holy water then melted the mummy. Is that how that works with holy water and mummies? I don't think they're uh, like you ended, are they? Well, I uh, guess it could be like a game mechanic. I, I would argue that just because they're undead anyway, but like they're a different Why type. are these mummies so moist? <laughs> they're covered in holy water. Yeah. Ooh. Well, they're a different type of undead. I, I don't know. Well, I, but, I, but are they an evil undead, a mummy? Um, I, I would say they have to be because like, but again, I, I think mummies, you, you choose to become a mummy more than anything. You know? Cetra does not serve such yeah. rules. Yeah. I don't know. I, for me, I always think think of mummies as like yeah okay it takes dark magic to become a mummy but it's more like a, it's like a necromancer almost Ooh. or like a lich where they've chosen that path does that make sense whereas yeah when it comes to like skeletons and zombies like the people that are the bodies that are being resurrected don't have a say whether or not they're being you, resurrected you, 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 you should wake up and go oh man <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much not this shit again no <laughs> okay um the rest of the loot in the room was a bit over 5,000 GP, making it properly worth our while. Janice leveled to three. The paladin, who had proved to be outstanding help during the delve, was himself very pleased with the day's work. He shook hands with the party departed to another city and went on his way and stated he'd be willing to work with them again should they decide in any further delves down here. Or down there. The Argolians were paid off, but not a much of a trickier job awaited. Ravis started hiring mercs while the party worked on getting information about Dragon's Tor and the Beastmen who'd taken up residence. He got most of the platoon of heavy infantry and a platoon of and a platoon and change of light infantry on payroll. After hearing it was hobgoblins at the tour, he made plans to bump up that member up as much as possible. He let the Argolians know that he was our Ar Ar Argolians know he was doing preparations for the tour, but it would take a bit of time to raise more troops. The Argolians let him know that the Prefect had decided on a different job for him instead, to stop the ongoing decapitations of vagrants in Cypheron's Undercity, which was starting to make the Prefect look bad. <clears throat> nice of them to mention that before Ravis wasted his money hiring troops. In the meantime, he's, he also spied out some information about the syndicate situation of the city of San Adanos into the south, hoping to absorb one, of the, one or more of the gangs there once the Prefect was off his back. Before that, Slav came to him with a treasure map he'd recently found. 
A hippogriff nest nearby. A mated pair of a mated pair on outcropping to the, on the southern shore of the Lake Lamin. You know what that means, Ravis. Hippogriff eggs are for the taking. Ravis grinned. Why settle for only the eggs when we can triple the take if we take both the eggs and the hippogriffs themselves? We'll take a fortune and might have a plan already. Mm, oh, that, that's plan with fire, I'm not gonna <coughs> lie. I would. Yeah. No, I'm not. So, I'm not trying to capture a hippogriff. It's just yeah, not you, gonna you, happen. How did how did get uh, I don't know uh, disemboweled? Yeah, how did, Ra- uh, yeah. <clears throat> how did you get fucked up? Uh, Ra- <laughs> yeah. Easily. Uh, Ravis spent the rest of the month failing a hijink to kidnap people for ransom, and Orenthal Jelani spent it failing a hijink to find treasure maps, and Kolf spent it failing to find a spell formula for slumber. But at least the Janus and Slav pulled off some small scale thefts from local merchants. The next month arrived, and that worst thing for the pocketbook came with it with it payroll and living expenses. Ravis decided it was time to press forward with the plan, and he and Slav had been working out. Time to rob that hippogriff nest. The nest itself was in the southeast corner of the Lake Laman, just south of Saffron, on a tall, rocky outcropping. Uh, Their you, map described they made a pair. What? Huh? One of you guys are getting fucked off that cliff. I guarantee yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Their map described a mated pair of hippogriffs located there. A mated pair meant eggs with almost 8,000 GP each. And live hippogriffs were worth over 8,000 GP a pop themselves. It would be a haul, but it would take some planning and some major investment. Their first step was dropping almost 1,000 GP on poison. Hellebore, 225 GP a dose, but only in 1d3 turns after ingestion. It would have some serious effects take hold. Rabbis had already acquired a couple doses in the previous month, yada yada. The next step was spending even more money, 500 100 GP and getting a sage on retainer for the month, but they needed information. It wasn't like the Ravis knew anything about hippogriffs. Were the things active at night or just in the day? Would they eat a hunk of meat or only live prey? What kind of prey did they prefer? How would their sense of smell? The sage couldn't tell them about whether they were di- diurnal or nocturnal without a sample to identify the type of hippogriff. But the rest, she, she could answer just fine. Live bait was best, and so while Janus chartered him a small sailing boat for the trip to the rock, the two thieves grabbed a couple kids. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, no! Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> hey, you, you, hey, do you guys want to go on a fucking adventure? <laughs> I mean, like, could they not at least, like, you know, can you not get some horses or something, or like some cows? And like, the you know, children are sweeter than the hippogriff. Fair enough, fine. The, the the griffs can smell the innocence. Oh God! <laughs> Jesus. Down Lake Lamont went Ravislav, Janus, and six henchmen. The ship's captain needing only a day to get them to their destination. They dropped anchor and spent the next day and night watching the rock. The good news: the hippogriffs hunted during the day and didn't hunt over the water, so they were left all alone. The bad news: they weren't two adult hippogriffs. They were fine. Uh, Clearly, the eggs are already hatched. The plan was going to get much trickier to pull off. Well, Ravis hadn't sunk 1,574 GP into his adventure to turn back now. That evening, they hauled their bait up the easier rear slope of the crag and tied them to stakes on top, prepared, <laughs> especially prepared with the poison doses. <laughs> Despite the kid's endless bleeding getting on his nerves, Ravis wished they had gotten their hands on a couple more of them before heading out because with five hippogriffs, he'd rather the chance to poison more of the creatures than just give two of them a double dose. But even though they've been able to buy the kids for a small enough sum, three GP each. Me, come on. <laughs> come on, you three gold, mate. Three gold, is that it? You can... Let, let's start out. We don't want to shed blood by the fourth month. Grab those fucking kids their fate now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But don't worry. They got, don't worry. They got them for a steal, only three GP each. I mean, that's not a bad deal, not gonna lie. Like, you know, they they just have to make do and press on. <laughs> Early next morning, they were treated to the sight of two hippogriffs descending on the bait almost the moment they set eyes on them. The kids on top didn't stand a chance. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie. It doesn't sound Tied to a stake. They didn't stand a chance. Yeah, because you made it so. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. I mean, look. <laughs> Fuck six. All I'm saying is, I haven't done anything this bad in a very long time, okay, guys? Look, we may be monsters, but we're not fucking evil villains, are we? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm a villain, not a monster, ties kid to a stake. We were. God, dude. Like, like I understand it's a role playing game, but fuck six, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're bad people, bad, bad boys. Kid, the is. See the below. Killing kids is kind of is based in Anakin pilled. <laughs> Early the next, they were quickly torn apart and devoured. The other three hippogriffs flew off to hunt while the first two retired to digest their mutton. The party waited a day the next morning, so only three hippogriffs head out to hunt. Two of the smaller ones and one of the bigger ones. As soon as they were out of sight, the party zipped over to the cliff face with a big supply of rope, nets, and block and tackle. Ravis scaled the four-foot sheer face and dropped the rope down for the rest. Inside, the two hippogriffs were, were reeling from the effects of Hellebore. The double dose hadn't given, having, hadn't given double the effect, but made it harder for their bodies to fight it off, and both of them were, were stretched out sick on the floor, unable to fight the intruding party or even flee. 
All the more welcoming was a, was a sight of a trio of eggs sitting in the larger uh-huh. hippogriff's nest. A word about it made a pair wasn't wrong, just hadn't been complete. Oh, okay. The party quickly set to work setting up the block and tackle. Even the smaller adolescent hippogriffs was still 750 pounds, and they needed to be intact at the bottom of the cliff. So they, they take great care of the hippogriff, but not the children. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, here, look, you know what I mean? You don't want to waste the... You don't want you don't want to waste it. You know what I mean? Like, don't make make the most of it. You know, look, see, this make is what, the most of it. See, so this is one of the problems I've got with like poaching. Like, you know, see, whenever you see like people like poaching like white lino and stuff like that, well, I suppose not anymore. But the problem that you're dealing with is you're begging some of the poorest people on the planet not to go over and like beat an animal on top of the head. Do you know what I mean? And like millions. Like, how do you do that? How do you just stop? poachers from happening like do you have any idea bar like giving these animals like permanent guard usually it's counter poaching with rifles and shooting hunters but that's just me yeah that's the problem like you know, that's I, it's one of those ones when you go really look into poaching it's like how do you stop incredibly poor people from doing it you know what i mean especially when it's so tempting for them <laughs> Jesus oh, christ it was like we'll tie these kids to the, to the stick and good luck to you oh, yeah. um so basically, they take the younger one, they hook it up, they drop it down. Um, so they get all the all the harpies set up and then nets for lowering, lower down the eggs. You know, they, um, after a short discussion, they opted to leave the adult female behind. This was a superb haul as it was, and next year the female would have more eggs for them to take. <laughs> They even <laughs> good idea. Jesus not gonna lie, Christ. I'll give them that. They even left her valuable feathers unplucked. She needed those feathers to keep hunting if she was going to lay more eggs for them. Back in Cyberfan, the party sold off one egg and any any adolescent for sixteen thousand GP and a full fifteen GP profit after expenses. <laughs> With two more eggs to sell in the following months, as market demand permitted, uh, Ravis leveled to six, Slav to fifth, Jazz to fourth. It was such a good haul. They even considered sharing the fourth the future payout with the other two eggs with the rest of the party. Well, they considered it at least. Ravis, high on success, decided to blow the bulk of his initial share on an act of generous public works to lock him in at ten thousand reserve XP, and took a stroll to see just where it might be most noticed. Well, it'd be most noticed in the slums of the Sand and Bones territory, but then the Sand and Bones Guild would notice too, and that would end poorly, to say the least. A visit by the servant quarter tenements certainly led him near some suggestions for improvements in their area, namely for the perpetual vagrants to clear out of, to clear out of the nearby undercity. It's got really bad with them recently. They even started floating down the canal, missing their heads. Oops. It had been almost two months since they paid off the previous debt from the Argolian family. Time to get the crew together to pay off the other debt by stopping those vagrant decapitations, lest he end up in a dark room with the lantern in his face again. Revis ended up blowing the money on ale and whores instead. Hey, what, As you do. what, what, what else? What else be doing? Come on, let's be serious. Then he says, I'm going to go take a pee pee. <laughs> Shattered, Scot- Shattered sons of the cult of Dugon. Durgion. Durgion. Behold, Durgion. <laughs> Goddamn yeah. Durgions. The scattered sons spent the rest of the month tidying up a few loose ends before tackling the headless vagrant problem. Ravis failed again a kidnap for ransom attempt, but his fighter henchmen with, with Berserker Gang got enough experience from shaking down merchants to get to level 3 and more than double his HP. Importantly, they managed to get some rumors about the cause for the murders. Apparently, there was a cult operating down in the Undercity. Uh, let's see. The party heading to the Undercity consisted of Aravis, Thief 6, Slav, Thief 5, Janus, Assassin 4, Colt, Evan Courtier 3, and all their henchmen. Uh, the group went on a... Jesus Christ, the cat's using the cat box and guessed me out. What the fuck? <laughs> What'd you eat?! I mean, I, I, I couldn't do it. See, the, some, see cats inside? It's actually the most disc- I think it's because like, desert animals, like house cats are like from like the Middle East. As far They're as the full evil, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, I think it's like their inside. It, it, like, there's something like, see cats' kidneys? Oh my god, is there a more powerful form of kidneys in the world? You know, the, what they produce, like, oh my god, cat piss in particular is the most disgusting chemical known to man. It requires, like, enzymes to break down off of the clothing It has shit. to be. has to be. Jesus Christ. The group went in a couple hours before dawn, wearing vagrant disguises, coming in through the sewer. They saw a choke point in the hallway in- ahead. Ravenous was... I'm going to open the window, fucking window. Hold on. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, I'll tell you a story. So, Jeez, well, actually... The thing's, the thing's in the bathroom three doors down. I can still smell it. Christ. Like, I, I, I bought, like, <laughs> like, like, a scent catcher box for them, and, like, yeah. this cat has the insides of a troll's fucking... <laughs> Large intestine. No, I'll, I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys a story. So this was like years ago. This was a long, long time ago now. But 
pretty much there was this guy that I knew and we went down to his house and we ended up just getting stoned in his living room and he had two cats and his, the, like in the bathroom the litter box was like over full. it was bad it was really bad and like see I went in and I stood on stood on one by accident and oh my god the smell I ended up I, I was just vomiting all down me it was actually <laughs> it was the most disgusting thing it was it was brutal man that's all I can say like oh it was it was not fun that's oh the, see oh look I don't even want to talk about it let's just keep going <laughs> all right the group went in a couple hours before dawn wearing vagrant disguises coming in through the sewer they saw a choke point in the hallway ahead ravis was suspicious so he and slav checked for possible traps nothing found but a listening check heard voices up ahead and while they were spending a couple turns doing that colt was looking around board and felt a draft there had been a secret door there the whole time a bit more examination found a button that appeared to activate it, and finding themselves sans a ten-foot pole, and a pole arm was grabbed to safely poke it, and the door slid open, revealing an altar made of skulls and rotted heads with two black-clad figures dealing before it, one in full-plate armor and the other in a dress with a bat perched on her shoulder. Goth girl mommy detected? <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. The party had figured all decent people would be asleep at the sour, but overlooked that their targets weren't even remotely close to what would be considered decent people, and half of the party was caught by surprise, as was the enemy caster. Ravis, fortunately, was on the bounce and first to react. While he'd have to like to uphold his only mild, tarnished reputation for never getting involved with the dirty business of killing things, a free surprise round was a siren song. One shot later, and the cultist caster died from a 3D6 backstab for 70 points. How, how low is their HP pool? Holy shit. Yeah, Axe has got, like, Axe has got really low hit, hit points. Like, really low. Like, one hit kills you pretty much in a lot of it. Um, it's, it's interesting, though. It's really one of those ones. It's, it's worth checking out. I honestly, I really, it's one of those ones. The more I read about the system, the more I want to play it. But they've got rules for everything and i just i think it might just be a bit too rules heavy of a system for me to be able to successfully run mm. it but i think i could play it saying like a last friday <coughs> it was that the, the party's first combat and i uh i double shattered do do, the damage dice so the guy would, would go melee with, with a with, with a uh a ruffian and the ruffian had a mace right which does 2d6 yeah and I and I shattered twice on, on those damage dice. So I did twenty points, like twenty seven points of damage to him, and like nearly killed him in one shot. I was like, oh shit! <laughs> I f- you know what? It's one of those ones. Like I can I still feel bad. I I still feel bad whenever players die. You know what I mean? I'm like one of those ones. Where I was like, I do feel bad I for don't. them, but it's one of those ones. It's like, we you need to remember. That's I love playing games where combat is brutal. You visceral, know, where yeah. yeah, visceral and anything can happen. But it's one of those ones. I still feel like. <sighs> Players just need to get used to that, you know what I mean? Like, for Death March, it's pretty much you life expectant. Like, if you get into a firefight, you're probably going to die. Like, I would say... At least one I part. don't want to worry you, but you're probably going to die. Yeah, well, <laughs> whenever I go on Death March... I, I, How the hell did a machine gun kill me so quickly? This is bullshit. <laughs> take cover. Take cover and not <laughs> and hug the dirt, okay? You know, it's one of those ones. But it's the same thing. But I feel like Dyson Demons isn't as brutal, but it's still very brutal. You know, it is, it's still a very brutal system. But like, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. You wrote an article, actually, from Adscribe, didn't you? About killing your players? <coughs> you what now? You wrote an article from Adscribe, didn't you? About play- uh, killing your players? Yeah, yeah. Basically, you just fucking murder players roundhouse kick players <laughs> <laughs> never mind like, I don't think we can keep going with that copy pasta keep going I mean we could but yeah well you know we could like, let's see fun. So, Whack kills Caster. As Revis's cleave shot bounced off his armor, the anti-paladin, anti-paladin bolted down a side passage, smearing poison onto his blade as he went. Unfortunately, the half of the party caught off guard included the beefy fighter hench Ulmar. It would be Revis's other fighter hench who would be rushing after the anti-paladin to engage him in melee and stop his tactical retreat. Rewalk quick hands level two fighter who, while having a nice high AC, AC, a nice high AC of eight. That's a high AC. Yeah, it must be the other way around. Is it, is it like the numbers good? I don't know. Had only five HP. Behind him came the assassin with his pole. Is like a, like a D6 or some shit. Mm, but uh, Janice's player was the unluckiest of the entire group. And as usual, he was rolling like shit the session. The rest of the party piled in after in the following round with Rewalk. Rewalk? The anti paladin and Janus all swinging wildly. Garbage rolls here. And an enemy caster appearing behind the anti paladin and blowing a foul, <laughs> blowing his back out, and blowing a foul black powder as part of the death spell at Rewalk, but he ducked 
behind his shield unharmed. Flasks of military oil were tossed and torched were tossed in a torch throne to light them, and curses leveled at Slav, who hadn't packed any. But that only caused part of the hallway to burn since the flame wouldn't didn't reach the splashed anti paladin or occultist. The courtiers inspired the other members not yet in melee, and the lore master cast Bane Rune on Ulmar's polearm, but the tight hallway meant that Ulmar and Janus couldn't both get at the anti paladin with their polearms, and nobody could shoot I mean they could have used poke over his shoulder. Yeah. And nobody else could shoot into the melee to assist Rewalk while he held the line. Okay, so basically in the high so the anti paladin won the high roll for initiative. Yeah, it looks like as the anti paladin sword sped through sped towards rewalk where a single hit would spell certain death for the brave fighter. His foot slipped on the oil he'd been splat oh, they roll a natural one. Yeah. <laughs> must have must have had to <laughs> slipped on the oil he'd been splashed by. In the process of catching his balance, his hand caught the edge of his sword. He rolled a nat one. His sword that had been coated was with, with rockfish venom uh... and axe it- <laughs> so in Axe, if you roll a natural one with a poison weapon, you tag yourself with a poison and must save against it yourself or suffer its effects. And he completely blew his save. An imminent, an imminent date with the 46 damage loomed on the following round. Rewalk, meanwhile, was unable to land a blow on his thoroughly on his thoroughly armored and now thoroughly frightened opponent without a crit, so since an attack penalty wouldn't matter, he decided to try something different. He made a forced back maneuver against the anti-paladin, and he got his crit. The anti-paladin was rammed backwards into the burning pool of military oil, burning from the fire without the poison within. Oh, from the fire without and the poison within. Hmm. The whole the whole absurdly lucky turn of events made one thing abundantly clear. You can never donate too much to Calfe or Calafe. Janus charged forward and slew the enemy mage, finding a room further on with several cultists and forcers and other in another mage, a group whose morale shattered at the sight of the un- of the dead anti paladin. But as they tried to escape, the party chased down and killed two of the enforcers and the mage. Only a couple of the cult managed to successfully flee from their den. After that came the cleanup. The loot present didn't amount to more than a couple grand. For some reason, the lawful temples of Saffron didn't have the black magic spellbook buyback program. <laughs> oh no. Ban high capacity assault books. Um anti pilot's magical armor and shield once since those were at least five six of the value of the loot they found but with the party syndicates rapidly raising status we decided we would probably start needing properly kitted out muscle soon rearwalk was rewarded both the armor and the shield for his valor in holding the line and he made a pledge of loyalty and gratitude on the spot his stature seeming to swell as he swore to put them to good use defending his brothers in arms and crime, crime. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be swearing allegiance to a pack of thieves like these people. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I'll use you forever. Is that right? Uh, I mean, like, I don't know. To be fair, the guy wasn't there for like <laughs> for the hippogriff <laughs> capture anyway. Yo, it's the next day, by the way, guys. <sighs> Gar- could you believe that Garbo had like things to do? What? Yeah, like <laughs> have marriage relations with my, with my wife. Yeah, like, <laughs> Garbo, come read RPG story. No, I'm face deep in a woman right now. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh no! Right, like, okay, like, let's just keep going. How badly does this? Like, you know, I think these guys have been bad, but they're not that bad. I mean, like, okay, they fed some kids to a hippogriff. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, so, like we're going for no fatalities like by the fourth story so we tied the kids to a post so it's like wait 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 wait, wait. <laughs> i mean that's pretty all bad all sweet four sessions is bad for a lot of people so let's just keep going let's see where does this go the shattered sons of the law i am the law i'm gonna assume Ooh, okay <laughs> let's move this thing to my a proper window. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, their debts now considered paid. The scattered sons got back to the best way of making money. Crime. Hey. Can, can relate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> several high skill thieves. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not jokes you can make in public. All right. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> you can't make jokes like that garbage. Not in public. Oh, Bro, God. it's only white collar. Co- it's only a white collar crime. Relax. Yeah, that's um, all right. Uh, several high level skill sorry several high skill thieves spies level four were vetted and hired into the syndicate and a slow trickle of these would continue to be hired as opportunity permitted rather than try to expand the party opted to keep it small but elite gang and stay out of the way of the city's larger syndicates as much as possible getting forcibly taken over or wiped out entirely were very real dangers if they attracted the wrong sort of underworld notice before they could survive a gang war after yet another failed try, Rabbits finally managed to successfully kidnap someone, netting himself 8,000 GP and a pile of XP for the ransom of a mage from the Tower of Knowledge. But Janus, whose luck I had previously mentioned, trying to likewise kidnap someone, managed to roll a nat 1 and be caught. 
Not only was he caught, but he was caught absolutely red-handed. This is like a kid in his arms. I, I can explain. Uh, I'm also, yeah, no. That's my wife. Look, bro, I can explain. Yeah. <laughs> She's like gagged and shit. Yeah. It's a uh, role play. Arrest that man. I mean, like, let's be serious. If you mess up a kidnapping, it, but I think if you're like, if you're going to like attempt kidnapping and you mess up. This isn't where I parked my car for a surprise <laughs> birthday party. You're not Jerry. Like, they require an insane, like, charisma check or some o shit. Honestly, though, how do people get away with kidnapping as well? Like, Melf? Like, how do you keep people's identity? Like, how do you oh, do you like do I don't want to talk about this because I know how, but if I say stuff, people are gonna go, why, why do you know that? So I'm gonna go, <laughs> I was gonna say there are certain steps you gotta take. I well, I, well, I, I, I feel like kidnapping is a very it's a it's a hard crime to pull off. That's what I, I think. You know, that's that's all I'm putting like there. I just, I just feel like you know what? There's other ways to do crime, and kidnapping seems like a very uh, messy and very easy way to get caught. I don't know. Look, man, I saw I watched Fargo. Okay, it looks like a it looks like a nightmare. Okay, I I don't have the people skills for it. I don't have the people skills for ransom. Uh, uh, right. Give me your money or I'll fucking kill your <laughs> loved one. Like, uh. What are you do? Just... All right, okay, come on. Let's keep going. Fine. You you, 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 you have like a crocodile pit, wouldn't you? I got, I got a pit of crocodiles. I'll fucking use them. <laughs> no, we don't have crocodiles here. What, what, what can I have? It's gonna be like. It's just a, it's, it's, it's a pit of like fucking chips and fried fish. I swear to God, I'll give them diabetes. <laughs> oh, this is the most of I think I've heard in a while. I'll put you in this pit of fries and chips and fried cod, and the only way out is to eat your way out. You have six days. Good luck. <laughs> no, I think if I was to do it, I would just dump them in like a <laughs> never ending Indian street food vendor like market. <laughs> Bro, I would die. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was going, nope, and I was fucking steps off of a karate. Do, do you want to want to hear a good one, actually? My mum, uh, no, my granny, my granny went away on holiday. She went to India, like, in maybe, like, 2004 or something like that. And I always remember them going on about, like, how poverty stricken it was. And then it's not until I got a lot older, I, I realised, like, oh, wait, they just saw people, like, pooing on the side of their didn't they? That's exactly what they were talking about. Look, look bro, look, bro. I, I've watched, like, I, I while I'm working, I watch, like, these videos where it goes to like like Thai street markets or Japanese street <laughs> markets and the Indian ones always give me secondhand like dysentery dude. <laughs> the Indian ones are so bad. Now the only ones that come close to that is Chinese gutter oil. Have you seen that stuff? <laughs> that is <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. that is Don't what... worry bro, they purified the gutter oil. They did what to the what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's been but it's like no man, it burns off all the bacteria. It's sweet. I don't care. Stop poking that straight out of the fucking sewer. You filthy Oh my god. Look, let's keep going. Let's keep going going okay you know what if you want to do crime uh sell, sell god royal there you go that's that's how you get get away with crime these days oh i got one artist talking to me no, not... she's discussing noel fan boys with please don't <laughs> no not the noel fan boys she goes she because one one of the artists did all male knolls and she did it in a very like anime manfu style and and now Cora's like what about Finboy? Just make just draw a female knoll, god damn it. Garb, what no. about Finboy knows? Please no, I don't want like yeah. if if I pull that audience, I mean I could make more money, but still I would have no you know, sense of pride. <laughs> well, Garb, the thing, the problem is like how many people have asked you about hyenas? Let's be serious. Like, well, thing is, they're not based off hyenas, so oh, I'm immune from that. Oh, so you, fuck you. you. <laughs> Before anyone, th yeah, okay, far enough, far enough. That's what they're I'm based. They're based off wolves, wolves and coyotes. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. No fem, no fempeen here. Right? <laughs> it's all right, anyway. <laughs> her penis. Her penis. Don't you mean her penis? I say what? <laughs> like, like, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see. Uh, now, his 1d4 roll for favorable evidence was only a 1, and his 1d8 roll for, unfav for unfavorable evidence was a freaking 8. And the charger was kidnapping, so there was a very real chance of a PC being legally tortured or in in and proscribed. Prescribed these nuts. The scattered <laughs> sons dropped everything to assist. Hiring a high-end lawyer and lavishly dropping bribes into the court system wouldn't be, be wouldn't be enough. Even with that, the 2d6 roll was still going to be made at a negative four. So some contacts of the temple were appealed to in a lot of the good work the assassin had done in wiping out a chaos cult and saving vagrants, getting him and getting him attestants of good character. But it still wasn't enough. So they began, the DM's like, no, I'm killing one of you. Fuck this. Yeah. You, you fucking stole my game. Someone is dying. Look, I told you guys, I bought, I bought this adventure. I really want to play this adventure. You guys have decided you don't want to play the adventure. You go to play the fucking adventure, guys, okay? I, I don't care. You, you, so what are you going to play it, okay? <laughs> but it still wasn't enough. 
So they began to vi so they began visiting the witnesses before the trial, make making racketeering hijinks to convince them they must have not seen things correctly. Hey, you didn't see what was going on in the right ten five. Left. You know, you didn't see it with your right eyes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly, you know. Uh, maybe this uh, bag of gold make you see correctly and clearly now. Yeah, oh, a yeah. couple witnesses saw a reason and changed their story. Yeah, <laughs> ended up taking a flat roll, and luckily no one else was caught in the process. The roll was made. Oh, there we go, there we go. Like, you know, that's you gotta do what you gotta, you know. Like, if you have, like, honestly, if you play little playing games and you have you don't blame NPCs on daily, what are you doing? <sighs> Like, seriously? Like, sort of night? Like, bribes is basically, like, a handshake. I mean, if a character can't bribe something, like, then what's the point of having money? Like, hey, you can't bring that cot in this city? Well, my little friend Benjamin Franklin says I can. Oh, fuck me. Okay, as you were. I mean, like, honestly, it's pretty sweet tax for DMs just transferring out money a lot of the time. Let's be serious. I, I think that's one of the biggest problems I feel like a lot of DMs get with, like, long on campaign is money just goes out the fucking window. You know what I mean? Like it gets to a point where it's like money almost becomes worthless to players. Yeah. Pretty quickly, you know, after like maybe five <clears throat> sessions, it can be. They end up with a lot. But anyway, look, let's keep going. Let's see what these boys are up to. I'm sure they'll. Well, how, how badly do they fuck this up? I mean, <laughs> it, says, it says the the, the it says hello, Jane. It says the fucking cat and nine tails. <laughs> <laughs> It was an eight. Despite all their efforts, they still couldn't swing an acquittal with the sheer amount of bungling Janice had managed to do in that hijink. I just thought. <laughs> ah! Why does the body make this shit? Mate, um, if I infected you over there. No, no it's just, I'm, I'm just for like residual sicknesses. Yeah. Oh, I uh, did you guys see Garbo near killed himself the other day? Oh, I nearly impaled myself. <laughs> the bruise? Oh my god, hold on, I'll, hold on, hold on. You guys see the bruise, dude. Holy yeah, god, it's gotten so much worse. Is it actually? It's, yeah, like, it, 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 it's like a god American flag. <laughs> Yeah, how did you even manage that like enough though? Like, like fucking gopher hole, dude. You just fall down it or what? Um, so it was it was it was kind of twilightish, oh, okay. duskish, and uh, when the horses got out, so I was out repairing the fence because they tend to just they're playing around and then like because they're, they're playing around, they're doing horse stuff, and I guess they ran into it just poof, right through it. And like, oh shit, route! They decided to go out and do horse stuff, which and now it's all solid fence. I finally got around to it, but uh. Fucking! There was a gopher hole, and the grounding rod for the for the fence charger is attached to this to this rebar in the ground, the grounding rod. And I was trying to do the fence, and I was trying to fuck with the uh, the connections on the hot wire, and I fucking turned. My foot just slipped into a fucking gopher Jesus hole or a divot Christ. or something. Fuck. And I was thinking. And I, and, 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 and I was thankfully wearing a uh, pretty solid wool um, hoodie. My wife bought me an ex expensive, purely wool hoodie. And I, I went, fuck! And I kind of fell forward. And I saw the rebar shine in the moonlight. I was like, oh, fuck. And I just hit it. Whack! And this thing was basically two feet out of the ground. So I came down at full force oh. on top of that thing. But 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 my wool gambeson of a fucking hoodie <laughs> kept it from penetrating me. I was like, I was, so I basically went, Poof! and I kind of like caught like the main abdominal muscle there. And I oh. bounced like, Oof! I kind of fell over. Oh, honestly, I will get. So, is that like a side? Is that like a side of like how American you are? Because it does actually look quite a bit like an American flag. I can see that. <laughs> I know. Right? And actually, it actually you know, does. Not gonna lie. Like, America. <laughs> yeah. America uh, got stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I would. I would imagine like you know uh, a stab wouldn't would be more like Union Jack if I'd be honest with you. But like you know that's more of a lot to the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like. And the thing is, like, I got, I went, ow, fuck. And I kept repairing the fence. I just fucking ignored it. I mean, <laughs> like, man, my organs hurt. Wife goes, we'll go to the hospital. Nah. Yeah, it'll be all right. It'll just be fine. Like, it'll be fine. Well, the, 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 thing, the thing is, I have full health coverage via the V. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do it. Oh, so, God, my organs hurt. Who cares? Get over it, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, that does look pretty bad, not gonna lie, man. It does look My pretty... small intestines got a boo boo. Ah, fuck you, shut up. <laughs> it does look really bad. Like, that, that looks yeah, like a like... nasty bruise. And what's worse is that, like, uh,. Fucking, my family keeps like actually grabbing it. I'm like, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> or like, it, it's fun. It's uh, fun. Very fun. Anyway, okay. Uh, the whole affair cost the scattered such a whopping 2,200 GP in fines, bribes, and lawyers, along with the lost opportunity cost. That's loyalty for you. So basically, he was whipped. Uh, that's not too bad. <laughs> Just, Did you open um, it? Axe rules don't care. We did something like six to eight racketeering checks to intimidate witnesses. Even Ravis personally did it, despite it being better accomplished by the more martial source, but only two panned out. Just one more, and Janice would have been acquitted. But avoiding the loss of, but avoiding the, lo but avoiding the loss of his hands and all his legal rights was a pretty good alternative. Uh, I don't know. 
I think DM should have taken one of his hands. It would have been funny, like... Bro, like, yeah, uh, fuck you, Chip Chop. <laughs> I mean, I mean, at least take one of your eyes. Like, you know, that's... And well, th well, well, the thing is, I've done that, and, like, I remember... Because I, I had a feeling the guy was going to try and make it so his, his non-dominant hand um, yeah. uh, got chopped off. So I, had, so, I, so I had this adjudicator throw a ball at him. And I had him roll a, a save. I think it was like a brain power save. No, well, I, well, I guess it'd be a wisdom save yeah. for uh, for the for D and D. And he failed, and, he's, and his right hand caught the ball. And the guy went, "All right, jump off that one." <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh god! You know they used to always go on about that. Cause I remember whenever I was a child, I went to Turkey. So I did, and they always used to go on about everyone used to say, "You know, if they they catch you thieving here, they'll cut your hand off." It's like, yeah. I, I, I don't think they do that to Targus, not gonna lie. You know, I, I don't think that happens to Targus. Although maybe it does, let's be serious. Maybe it does. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. Look, let's just keep going. Let's bang this one out so well, I'm fucking dying. So. <clears throat> oh, you're dying? Oh, you're, yeah. you're gonna pass out and shit yourself? Yeah, but Not so long after... <laughs> <laughs> not like, so long after, Slav came up with an interesting plan. To get the group launched up the runs of power, what better way than getting Prefect Justrius Tavicus Basilio, ruler of the city of Seraphon, as an ally or as a patron? Now they might, I mean, they might try and go through these bundlings or arrange a meeting over some bribes and offer to be some assistance. But that would surely mean a long road of currying favor before any benefits might start trickling back the other way. Instead, Slav suggested, why not acquire information on what he considered his most troublesome local enemies and problems, solve one of those troubles for him, and then present the fix as a fate accompli gift, given out of respect. Far more impressive, setting the initial tone of the relationship close to the capable equals, they know disposable underlings, and with an unstated imitation unstated intimidation fact. Rebus and Slav decided to handle getting the information personally, being the most accomplished at spying out the entire scattered suns. Their initial attempts didn't meet with any success, but no problem. They just tried again. And then Rebus rolled his first ever natural one on the hijink and got caught spying on the prefect. So is this Which how you might not die? <laughs> This sounds like how you so, all die, not gonna lie, guys. Like, so there was a bathhouse, and I was fucking... The, the towel slipped, just cocked him right out. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was by accident. Which might... Is, <laughs> are you mean, dropping eaves, Mr. Ravis? I'm dropping no eaves, sir. Uh, which might not be so bad if you rolled the chance for the charges to be simple eavesdropping. But he did not roll the eavesdropping result. He did not even roll the sedition result. No, no. Ravis was charged of high treason brought against him. Uh... uh. <laughs> I, how you he was throwing it. Like, I, I mean, I, like, the, these guys should be dead. I mean, the term seppuku comes to mind, but it's yeah. all I think of. <laughs> Did I get... <laughs> he was thrown in the most secure part of the prefect's prison in the Undercity. I love World of Warcraft. To await his trial <laughs> in nine months' time, which would be overseen by the prefect personally. If you've thought Ravis was loving too quickly as e and easily via hijinks rather than from adventuring, welcome to the system of self-correcting for all the incredibly high risk he's been taking. Yeah. I mean... I'm, I'm invulnerable! <laughs> Shit, I'm vulnerable! <laughs> oh, no. I mean, like, honest, like, it's one of those ones. It, it, it's the same with most, like, are those sort of, like, OSR style games, high risk, high, you know, character die very easily, very quickly. It's just the, it's just the way it is. I feel like, you know, that that is one of the biggest ones I think I take away from more, like, old school type play is just players do... Uh, that's the problem I've got with 5e. Honestly, that's literally what it comes down to. I, I feel like players are just <coughs> mollycoddled too much. You know, I don't uh, get, yeah, a little bit. Don't get me wrong. It's not nice when your player, when your character dies, but like, uh, it kind of has to happen. Otherwise, it's not a game anymore, is it? You know. I blame theater kids. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that. Was, but my character's story. I don't give a fuck. You're dead. Was it Vampire the Masquerade that ruined it for everyone? I'm gonna use him <laughs> soon. <laughs> that's. And that's not. That's more like more just like dramatic goth kid than theater kid of that. I point. mean, that's like, I, would you not argue that Vampire Masquerade was like more like a tipping point where you got like more goth goth girls in the door and theater kids than the, the traditional nerd archetype? You know what I mean? I the thing is, it wasn't usually that bad. You know, I think it's more. Oh shit! Like the newer players coming in who've been affected by you know famous people playing D and D and going full theater kid. I think it's kind of affecting the general mindset of RPG games. Like I don't mind some acting or some role playing. Oh yeah, so, oh, I I, I still like, enjoy it. Like, have you ever gone in and watched like cringe theater kid compilations with D and D five E? No, Holy. I'm not doing that, Garbo. Don't be silly. I, I no, I'm not doing that to myself. 
I will send you some links later, James. <laughs> For God's sake, please. Uh, actually, <laughs> it was a oh my God, please don't actually. It was just, a. <laughs> I'm not watching. Please, please, God, no, please, no, no. It was a very bad situation that Revis found himself in. While he had people willing to give him good character assertions for him, uh, he also had a lot of evidence against him. A great lawyer and lavish bribes only served to even out the penalty from the seriousness of the charge. Ravis was a model defendant, charismatic and able to choose and able to choose his words diplomatically. But the perfect, but the prefect was over. I keep saying perfect. The prefect was overseeing his trial, and Ravis's name was had already come across his desk as a head of the Turo's Tim Heist, which had given the prefect a major headache not very long ago. Long ago. So Ravis was looking at rather than a plus two or a, or a plus one or even a plus zero mod on a two d six roll. Uh, uh goals keep going. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it got, but it got worse. With the, with the high profile nature of the case, strong arming witnesses was a known go. At nine months before the trial, Ravis would, be, would effectively be dead to the world for, mo for most of a year, effectively a PC death just from how long he'd be out. And after nine months in a dank cell, cowering in the darkness, suffering the lash, eating prison gruel, and other torments, his health would surely suffer. An escape attempt would be perilous. As an accused traitor, Ravis was in the high security cell, minus six to the check, giving a 25% chance to succeed and a 10% chance to get caught. And if that's pretty good odds, if you ask me. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's bad. Like, so you're saying there's a chance? Yeah, I mean, like, that's pretty, that's pretty not bad. I think it's better than, better than some. I mean, I've, 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 I've attempted worse. You know, that's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> and told if caught trying to escape, he'd be immediately executed rather than merely harming his eventual trial. Ravis reached out through his lawyer to request a meeting with the prefect to explain things man to man and try to work out a deal personally. Um, with some reflection about the situation he got himself into, Ravis realized his error. After the scattered sun's success against the, cal the cultists, his successful kidnapping of for ransom for ransom of that Tower of Knowledge Mage, he had not given any further offerings to Califa, the goddess of luck. And a man had, and a man they had never had some luck, and, uh, and man had they ever had some luck on those jobs. With their enemies practically killing themselves, clearly Califa was punishing him for his ingrati ingratitude. He decided what he should do is have all have his henchmen donate all of his wealth to their to her temple before the trial to win back her favor. I wasn't dead yet and was trying to. <laughs> buy reserve xp before the next six next yeah, step that, yeah that, yeah that's like it's fucking like desperate acts it's like yeah I'm, I'm, hedging I'm, bets <laughs> hedging bets yeah yeah definitely definitely I mean, However, even trying to buffer a bribe to the guards to deliver that message resulted in a swift beating. They'd been made well aware that the prefect's eye was closely on this case. Meanwhile, Slav and Janus were trying to figure out a plan to spring their friend. Janus, off Janus favored performing a recon in the prison, boldly storming it with a lightning assault, and then fleeing Sarafon entirely, or better yet, Olivara. Slav's own plan involved attempting a complicated gambit where the scattered suds would claim that Ravis was merely a patsy framed by the prefect's true enemies for their own nefarious ends and provide evidence to that fact, identifying some likely enemy to pin the blame on on the plus side if worked if worked and the plus side if it worked they'd not they'd not be hunted by the law on the downside the prefect did not want to talk I mean, like, but Ravis, alone in this dank, dank, dark cell, had no way to know what they were planning. Okay. I mean, like, like honestly, it says to me either the character dies or you bust him out and you move to a new city. That's that's pretty much your options. I feel like at this point, you know, uh, pretty well known. Uh, I think he's fucked. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Well, how do they how do they fix this? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Ravis, uncertain developments in the world outside, carefully weighed his decision. A trial had a chance of him being acquitted, but his lawyer. Said Suggested the odds are about two to one against him surviving, and nine months in the cell was almost was n itself almost unbearable. If the scattered sons were planning some sort of rescue, it would likely take months to plan and prepare, and a violent rescue would be certain to leave some of his crew paying for his freedom with their lives, upon which they'd all be hunted men. No, Revs decided this was up to him. <clears throat> he relied on his skills as a thief, which had served him so well prior, and trust that Califa had not totally abandoned him. Yeah, I mean, like, the guy's a thief, sort yourself out. Get yourself out of the fucking it, cell. What yeah. do you do? Just unsteal yourself, bro. <laughs> yeah. If she had, at least he'd die in his own terms. We began scratching onto the back corner of his cell wall with a loose chip of stone while carefully examining guard routines, response times, and every nook and cranny of his cell and chains. Seventeen days later, the guard came to deliver a meager bowl of slop to the special prisoner and found only the following etched into the wall. Will prove my innocence, my regard to the prefect, Ravis Phalus. Hey, Slav has sent out his yeah. Imagine how pissed a guard like oh fuck oh, oh dude fucking kill me no. I mean like fuck. I, I mean like the the guy that did Epstein got away with it so like you know eh 
I wouldn't really worry that much. Um, okay. Right. So, Slav had sent out his people to start carousing for info on the Prefect's publicly known enemies, and Janice was preparing to start the recon of the prison, Both when both were surprised by the appearance of Ravis at the Scattered Sun's hideout. The Prefect was so kind as to extend to me his hospitality, but I didn't want to be the sort of guest who never seems to leave. I'll need a shave, a bath, a meal, some wine, and a disguise, in the opposite order. The other two just stared, dumbfounded. <clears throat> what? Hold on, scroll. Why is there a big titty girl sitting there? Ooh. That's <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's Greta Thunberg. <laughs> uh, it's because they were they they were guarded by the artists, like AI artists. Oh. And because they use AI art, and say, so, go back to the containment board. I don't know, man. I like I'm not no, not going to talk about AI art. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Let's just keep going. You paragon of Satan using your AI art. Oh no. Oh no. As soon as those you you will wait one year for your art and you will like it. As soon as those immediate <laughs> needs have been handled, Ravis pulled 8,000 GP from his coffer, the entire take from the rest of the Tower of Knowledge Mage, and headed to the Temple of Kelifa. They just still trying to hedge his bets. He's like, please, I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> fucking get his XP in there. Yeah. He'd made, to his knowledge, not only, not just only one, not one of the only escapes from the most secure part of the Safaran prison, but far and away the fastest. Ravis was a good thief. He was a very good thief. And he didn't even, and he even, and, but he did, hmm, but he even, he did, bro, yeah, right write like this, but he <laughs> even, he didn't think he would, that's too many he's, bro. But even he didn't think he was good enough to escape on his very first try and be bringing the crisp spring air again in only two and a half weeks. It must be Califa smiling on him again, and this time he would be sure to show gratitude. So he goes there and he, and he uh, gives her 8,000 GP, 8, GP reserve, 17,000 XP, yada yada. There's, yeah. there's a, with some smooth words to his sister disciples, he was brought before the re revered mother for a meeting. Ooh, ooh. Why, yes, she did have problems that could be solved by adventurers. Ooh, 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 ooh. The Cult of the Horned Rat, an old cult recently... Sounds awfully uh, familiar, eh, James? Yeah, I think I've heard that one before. Yeah, yes, yes, Horned Rat Rat. An old cult recently revived after a long absence was waylaying people at night, delighting in their murder as much as the theft, and those victims' bodies were regularly arriving at the house of mourning. The revered mother had been told the general location of their hideout and wanted them dealt with. Ravis assured her that he would take action, and whatever treasures Califa saw fit from the fun within the cult's coffers, that would be payment enough. Okay. Back at the hideout, Ravis got filled in on what was transpired while he was locked away. The horn rat was only was the, was the only cult to keep in mind. Run the street was is that there's a drag a cult the cultists of Derigion were quite upset with the clearing of the little operation in the undercity, and while there had been nothing in the way of reprisal yet, it would be better to deal with them on a scattered sun zone terms in the long run he'd rather find he'd either need to find a way to prove his innocence and clear his name leave the borderlands and set up in a different area painful mm -hmm. or give up his or, or give up his or give up his life of crime even more painful i just can't stop stealing <laughs> mother. I'm sorry i mean like the thing is see when you think about it like so if you look at like vikings for instance vikings a lot of the time a lot of the guys that would sign up for these sort of leads especially like early on they only went on like one lead their entire lives and they would, then they would be set up for life, and then they would get their so, farm, and then they would be able to live a pretty modest life, pretty comfortably. When they would go, when they would go, when they would go find a Vilking, they would be fucking ecstatic. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go out there and get treasure. And, and, and either you come back rich, or you come back a dead man. You yeah. Make it through. Think, and a lot of these guys will go, out, will go for a single raid, bring back probably six years of wages or whatever it might be in the region, and a couple slaves, and like, okay, I'm I'm fine. Then they get a wife or two or three, and they're like, okay. We make babies. We make farm. Goodbye. And that's, 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 that they would do it once. Now, some of them, of course, is all conjecture and trying to yeah. piece together tales and legends and shit. Would just go on raids all the time just to kill people. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm sure there was people like that. And you could argue the same thing with like sailors, for instance. Like, you know, oh, for sure, for um, sure. Sailors again going the whole way around the world to get spice. You know, it's very dangerous. Um, your chances of survival are very slim. But if it works out, oh but my them god, them island girls gonna be acting unwise. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, oh, I mean, <laughs> you're the worst one. It's like, I mean, of all the island girl girls, you get the choice between uh, South Americans or Aboriginals. No! <laughs> hey, 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 up. hey, hey. We... We've seen South Americans, all right. There are some, there's some honey in the pot down there. Yeah, that's what I'm point. talking about compared to. I'd, I'd, I'd say take South Americans any day over Aboriginals. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's not even a competition. Anyway, I'm going to have to cut that. Uh, hold on. Let, we well, let's see. Tanned, tanned feather princess or unga bunga goblin. Uh, which one? <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> so we got, so we got, so we got to figure out what we got to do. 
Like, where are we? Um, I've slot got, I've got slot right. suggested that if they couldn't pin the blame for the spying on someone else, that maybe taking over the gang situation in St. Donald's and keeping low enough profile would work. So Ravis had some options. His future status was a problem to be solved rather than his end of his career. Mm. I mean, like, I mean, you made your money. You just, like, light off into the sunset and just be like, see yeah. things about. You know, I'm going to go live on, like, some wee island somewhere on a stack of money and live a very comfortable, modest lifestyle. How does that sound, guys? <laughs> see you about. If he's like, all I'm saying is, if you can buy a child for literally three gold and they're sat and they've had, like, <laughs> they've got in, like, hundred, like, they've got in for, like, tens of thousands. Per per fucking like session, the guy the guy's pretty sweet. You know what I mean? He's pretty well to do. You know? I don't know. I suppose like let's just keep going. Yeah, you can buy the children you want, bro. <laughs> I mean, you can start Jesus. you can start your own Epstein Island. You know what I mean? Start your own. Oh, sleeve for God's game. sake, James! <laughs> start your own sleeve lever camps for God's sake. You know what I mean? Here, there you go. I don't think there's anything against sleeve lever back in the days anyway. So like you know, yeah, why why does he even need to do illegal shit? Like you know, you can do perfectly legal stuff at that point. Get away with it. You really could, yeah. Yeah, you know, once you had. I also <clears> think <throat> that's the case so with a lot of people. I feel like once you had, like, a certain point, it's like you don't need to be, like, doing, like, illegal <laughs> shit anymore. You know what I mean? Open up, like, open up, like, 17 bakeries and m- m- make money all day long. It's, it's <laughs> I am the baker king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like you that. know, <laughs> I'm ready to make some money. Uh, it's all rolling in. Uh, be like that knowing, like, retired thief makes bread puns the entire fucking day uh, be jack horner just be jack horner <laughs> dude like have a pie kingdom and fucking just buy knickknacks on the side <laughs> yeah that's not a bad way to go about it actually like no i don't know okay <coughs> so basically they're talking about you know what they're gonna do uh you know events had just transpired on the large region as well the imperial vanguard adventuring party the goody two shoes example party with an ax3 capital of the borderlands had made official claim to dragon's tour and attacked the hobgoblins there with a butt with a body of troops Oh my god, instead they're still doing this. Have they not sorted this out yet? <clears throat> yeah, no. oh Inst- Instead of fitting as a, as a domain, they got repulsed with heavy troop losses. The hobgoblins and some ogres and some other creatures in the number boiled out of there in response. This let- led to a powerful beastman raiding party traipsing up and down the eastern patrol area of the Palantine of Ciadanos, with, with a few enough troops on hand to immediately fall back on the prefect authorized press gangs to scrape up enough militia and garrison the north while he strips the few troops available to deal with the problem. The scattered stuns carefully avoided the conscription efforts bribing the officers so he's like he's trying to get the party to go take care of the big bad evil problem like like how about no (laughs) please sort out that border issue sort it out uh you know what i really enjoy playing this instead i'm sorry mom stares and crimes and again how do you suck my (laughs) dick i mean like i feel like i don't you suck my balls dm i feel i feel like at this point either the dm needs to speak up and say it's like can we please just do this i would really love to love this or like just start a new game or just can we please Please run the module. How about <laughs> Nehru? Fuck you. Uh, you know what? I can't. I can't help but appreciate this type of shit. Let's <laughs> let's keep going. Let's see. We're 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 almost there. So we are. The scattered sons realized there was a golden opportunity here. Was it to infiltrate the Beastman Raiders and assassinate their leaders to gain political favor? No, no, no. With the Imperial Vanguard licking its wounds in the Tor's garrison out in the field, they could sneak in and loot Dragon's Tor the way true thieves would make their DMs see them shit themselves in their chair. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it! No. Rather, uh, rather than try to carve their way through a layer of Beastman to get it. I could seething DM noises all I'm hearing this uh, fucking entire adventure. <laughs> what we expected. Insane. One what we expected. One week travel, few few if any injuries and dead, small consuming costs, profit. What we got, one week travel, one wooden henchman, twelve hundred and eighty eight GP and expended cost zero GP profit. Dragon's tour had turned to be guarded tight with too many troops left behind to try and do a raid and trained apes who'd be able to smell out any sneaking thieves. Trained apes. What they <laughs> what? Huh? Ape together smell. <laughs> <laughs> the bar- the party returned to see Adonis disgruntled. There they learned that the Imperial Army forces sent by the Prefect, with the assistance of the non bed resting members of the Imperial Vanguard, engaged a hobgoblin force south of Sea Adonis, dealing them a serious casualties and sending them scurrying back towards Dragon's Tor. Before they headed back north, Ravis decided to scout out the situation with Sea Adonis' was underworld to see if it might be a more suitable location for their own syndicate activities. He also learned something about larger amounts of coin from the squeezing the merchant supply of the border forts, and lucrative crimes are always of interest. 
But while he and Slav and Atria were collecting rumors, Janice decided to make a bit of money on the side. One afternoon, he showed up at the party's makeshift headquarters with a blindfolded and bound up kidnap victim. But what I he'd mean, gotten yeah. proved to be proved a surprise. If you guys don't gird your fucking ass with kidnappings, what's up with the kidnappings? <laughs> Is he Janice? What you got there? Smoothie, the guy <laughs> bound and gagged with a rope. Uh, <laughs> 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 never mind, never mind. I'm going to make some Pulp Fiction jokes in a minute. Let's just keep going. <laughs> this is some real gourmet <laughs> shit. The scars, smooth scalp man who he captured, Ravis had heard about him recently. The kidnapped man was part of the local crime scene. Specifically, he was the leader of the criminal... <laughs> he was oh. the leader of the criminal underworld in Ciudadanos. Ravis's eyes lit up. Ransom? No, no, no. This was time for a gang takeover. Uh, <laughs> Please just run the module. <laughs> Fuck you, DM. <laughs> he, can't make me, he can't make me play this. I'll, I'll play my own game. Oh, my God. <laughs> Blackjack and hookers. Yeah. But all of those thoughts vanished upon the victim regaining enough consciousness to mutter when the family finds out about this. That made this another matter entirely. With one of the ag without one of the Agrarian underbosses, there was only one real option. Turning to Janice, Ravis said with a pointed look, "You brought you've brought trouble on all our heads. Make it make it disappear quickly." Janice's mouth spread to a wicked grin as he looked at the underboss and fingered his knife. See, Adonis is a lovely swap nearby. Slav hopefully added. Later that day, the party quietly got the hell out of uh, Ciudadanos. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I don't think that was... Jesus Christ. <laughs> right, okay, let's see. Where does this go? Where does this go? We're all nice far. crime syndicate leader, Steph. <laughs> Uh, the scattered sons were back at uh, 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 Cypheron, and Ravis got, was going stir-crazy. A thief kept from crime makes a miserable sort of fellow. Ravis, having escaped from prison not even a month ago, still had charges of high treason hanging over his head. Even walking through Cypheron and Sands of Skies could land him back in that tight in that lightless cell, to say nothing of getting pinched for even the pettiest of crimes. Badly needing to get out of a safe house, but denied his rightful criminal, <laughs> criminal opportunities, Ravis decided to go do something best avoided normally, adventuring. <laughs> So DM finally won. Earlier, Ravis had tasked the revered mother had asked the revered mother of the Grave Sisters for something that might get the favor of Califa, the luck goddess, without draining his coffers from donations. And the revered mother had asked him to deal with the cult of the Horn Rat and in the Undercity. She described it as she described it as an old cult, recently revived after a long period of quiet, now waylaying people at night, seeming to delight in the brutal murder as much as the theft. They were rumored to be able to see perfectly in the dark and able to appear and disappear from areas thought inaccessible. Well, the scattered sons had some practice dealing with cultists, and Revis had already donated over 10,000 GP to Califa's followers to make sure his luck held good. So wiping out a cult to secure some more good fortune seems simple enough. Right. <clears throat> the first step is information. With several of the syndicate's spies carousing for rumors, they learned that the old cult before the captain of the Underwatch killed everyone in their shrine had been compromised of where had been comprised of were rats. Great. Oh, George, not the were rats. <laughs> not the were rats. <clears throat> it certainly explained the earlier claims about the cult's abilities, but tangling with those sorts of creatures was not was not quite simple enough as Ravis had thought earlier thought. Still, the idea of going back to staring at the walls all day was somehow even worse, even, and if his luck was good enough, his troubles might just fix themselves. More troubling was that nobody seemed to know just how big the cult was. For just for that obvious reasons, it was impossible to infiltrate, but based on their activity, there couldn't be that many of them. Has he not know what a rat is? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Where rats breed like, well, you know, rats. Meanwhile, Colt the Elf went to the Tower of Knowledge to buy spells and spoke with the Provost in charge of Elven texts, um, asking how the possibility of getting a cure disease spell in case of lyco lycanthropic infection got the Provost's attention. It turned out he had some knowledge of the cult's location. He informed Colt that they'd made their lair where there was a rumored stash of sealed or hidden Elven texts said to have secrets of immortality in the warrens under the northern part of the old city. With Kulth having gotten the Kulth's location, the company could press forward rather than continue the hunting for rumors, and those elf books would fetch a pretty price for the Algorillians. The second step was preparation. The need for silver or magic weapons to fight lycanthropes was easy enough to learn and remedy. The party fought out the city's supply of silver daggers and arrows, and Janice the Assassin found the weaponsmith able to craft three custom silver-coated pole arms for the company's heavy hitters. And a sprig of wolf's bane for each person as a cheap backup option. You have allergies. Ah! <laughs> so basically, they came thinking the matter of getting access to the lair. The scattered sons knew of two entrances to the sewers. One was on the opposite side of the river and useless to them. The other under a temple that they had temporary access to for their previous the job hunting cultists. This could go through a sewer outlet along the riverbank, but that would mean trekking a long way through the sewers and potentially meeting all sorts of trouble along the way. Not Instead, the, the company... Tri I know. <laughs> not, not, the not the shit water. Not the, not the gadgies. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
It smells like Indian in here. <laughs> Instead, the company tipped over a merchant's cart to cause a noisy distraction, while Slav's dwarven dwelver henchmen broke loose two of the bars in the sewer grates near the lair, then reset them into place. The result was effectively a secret door and, dub and immediately dubbed the shit gate. Oh, no. <laughs> Any <laughs> the designated shit game. <laughs> you know, they, uh, they, anyone did, <laughs> they did that to me before because I, I described a loop as like a dump loop. So I did, like, you know, just like a loop, like, like, like a storage loop, just one that like people just like fucking leave shit in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like a dump door, you know, like a door that's got like scissors and like sellotape and like batteries and like cables from like 15 years ago. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And they're, they're like, a dump door, yeah. And, you just sh and then, of course, yeah, they went ahead and just started shitting on them. Thanks, guys. <laughs> LOL DM, ha ha, ha shit's in door, ha ha, got you DM, like, I hate you people. Yeah, it's alright, because I do it to them all Every the time. Every day so I like... pray for your death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you guys like tabletop RPGs? Do you like waifus and husband foods in a colorful fantasy world? Do you fucking hate the ATF? Well, partner, do I have a tabletop RPG for you? Based off of a book series that holds back zero punches, the Vill Rider TTRPG is a game system based around the use of both blood magic, spells, swords and spears, as well as a healthy dose of machine gun fire and grenades. All activities in the game are based around an action point system, a set of points that you both use and spend and regain to do things in the world, allowing you a huge breadth of actions both in and out of combat. The basic field man you'll boast 17 playable races, both foreign and familiar, including gnolls, elves, harpies, and spider folk. There are additionally 19 jobs with unlockable skill trees, ranging from a newly turned local men-at-arms to gunslingers who have luck on their side and might just be your huckleberry. Ah, did we mention the war crimes? There are war crimes. There's a war crime chart. There's a war crime score. Yeah. Don't overuse the gas weapons and human shields or else local law may be a bit pissed. While the basic player manual or field manual is enough to play a game, there is also the combat controller manual that expands on nearly everything in the field manual, including nearly a hundred new spells and potions, weapons, beckoners, drugs, and all a manner of tools to use in the creation of the game. I also paid extra for hand-drawn art, so yeah, there's that too. If you want to be a dwarven machine gunner mowing down southern elves while blasting pumped up kicks in your ears via cassette player, then the Veil Rider TTRPG is the game you have been waiting for. Ah, shit, the Yamatu found the Willy Peek grenades. Hey! Hey! Put that down! So, it's been like, what, like two weeks since we were oh recording God, this? Oh, God, is back. Oh, the <laughs> oh no. going to shit. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, right, so, um, Garbro, uh, then Garbro, I, I said to him, I was like, right, you ready to do, finish all the story time? He's like, do you want to just talk about tanks? It's like, <laughs> 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 like, fucking mind poison. We could, or we could. Talk about armor presents. And Jim's like, oh no, my weakness! <laughs> Get out of my head! Oh, I mean, I, you know what? I, I do actually really want to talk about tanks, but we're that far into the story time, and people have been asking for it. Honestly, it's an alright story Jeez, time. Jeez, Nick Beardy, I finish a story time, Nick. Read, read a thread, Nick Beardy. Right, fine, okay, we're back. Right, okay, there we go, Garbo, you got it. We zoomed in enough. Uh, you, you share know, your screen there, Chuckle Nuts. Yeah, I've, I've got my show screen open for you. Does it's open for me? Zoom out. No, like, I, uh, hold on. I, oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> God, James. Uh, okay. Right, okay. So you're aware now? Uh, oh, Jesus. I just zoomed. Oh, there we go. Well, there we go. Was that a giant pair of titties? Over? Yeah, it was, hey, actually. Yo. Oh, you, you oh that, uh, yeah. that, that fucking Greta Tittberg. Yeah. <laughs> Greta Tittberg. Oh, my God. Right, okay. Where am I? If you uh, start eating fossil fuels, you can motorboat me. Hmm. <laughs> Fuels, huh? uh, well, ultimately, <laughs> right. Anyway, anyway, look, there we are. There we are. <laughs> what are they? Do? The, the guys are dealing with vampire or not vampires, werewolves now, isn't it? Uh, were rats or some shit. <laughs> look, guys, it's been like two weeks since we since we were recording this. Okay, the a conspiracy. Be... There are were rats in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, Greg. Cheese to meet you. <laughs> it's a fucking talking <laughs> rat. Anyway, no, um... right. Okay, look, let's do this. Okay, so we're. Put your precursor where we are. We are. Oh, the shit gate. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's the shit gate. 
The last thing needed was more muscle. The sort the sort skilled at cutting down monsters. Someone willing to take a mission to kill killer creatures with no sure loot in the end. Someone like that paladin. So Ravis and Janus tracked down a certain old acquaintance. Franco's hope you've been well. I'll spare the pleasantry since we're here on business. We're planning to wipe out the cult of the horned rat. Rather on the nose. Hmm. And we'd like you with us for this mission. I know you said earlier you see specifically Crusade Against the Undead. There might be undead there, but I'll be straight with you. It's probably a pack of were rats. I what mean, do you say? Can we can we count on you? In? I mean, a paladin wouldn't mind doing that, bro. Yeah, a paladin would be totally on board. You know, I, I, I still I, mutants, I, racks, I, paladin hammer. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually working on. So I'm doing <clears throat> the bastard princess is completely finished. I'm just waiting for the cliff to come in, and then it's going to be going up for sale. But I start working on my totally not Epstein Island adventure. So uh, <laughs> you guys will find out. You guys, you guys will find out. I don't want to right, say too much. Child soldiers, what's going on here? <laughs> here, Garb, actually, hold on. Let me let me show you it here. I'll get. Oh, I'll Jesus get, Christ! I'll go on. I, go. You know what? I don't even care. Can you guys just like read the story? How about no? <laughs> four, four minutes in, yeah. <laughs> How about no? The blood pact of Saint James, a divine comedy. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I, I don't want to show you too much. Oh yeah, there's James Alphantus, by the way. Mm. I, th I think that's cool enough. Do you like his flatbread pizzas? Or no, his flat. It's 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 not a pizzeria. By the way, guys, it's a it's a bakery, okay? Trust me on how that to one. Get, how to, God, dude. Wow. <laughs> just just you. Yeah, I had to change his name <laughs> instead of James. It's Julius now, by the way, guys. Julius. Yeah. Oh, and also, okay. So look at the name. Do you like this for the so manner of Lothchild? Eh? Eh? That's that's I'm totally. That's I'm, totally. I'm gonna email. I'm gonna e email from fucking Megan. Like, yeah, James was found dead from three gunshots in the back of the head <laughs> yeah. and, a, and a fucking chippy or some shit. Yeah. So like, we'll find out. We'll see what happens anyway. Uh, I don't. I don't really want to spoil too much, but like, I'm having fun with it anyway. You know what I mean? I, th I think it's. Oh, here. Do you like the airship, the Lola Express? <laughs> Eh? The what express? Yeah, I have to change the name. It can't be called the Lolita Express. <laughs> the fuck you can't. You keep that goddamn name. No, well, <laughs> well, you know what? Okay, so at the, the better... The Lola Express? Yeah. Lola. Yeah, I had to change the name. And then, um, who else did I have to change the name for? I also had to change the name for... Ba -ba -ba -bum. Oh, yeah, it's Jepstein Island, by the way. Back to the story. Back to the story. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Jepstein Island. I'm not dying with you, all right? Back to the story. <laughs> right, okay, fine. I want to give updates. Wanna die to, I don't want to die to a suicide gunshot for the fucking three in the back of the head, all right? Yeah, okay, okay, It was clearly fine. a suicide. Fucking excuse me. Yeah, it was, a, it was an armed robbery, so it was. They didn't take his wallet or anything. It's like, no, it cost me. It was totally an armed. It was totally a yeah. robbery. Anyway, anyway all right. let's keep going. Um... What do you say? Can we count you? Can we count you in any ways? We're not sure if there's any treasure involved, but we'd of course cut you in on any we do find and pay you a month's retainer fee. Janus added with his best attempt at an honest smile. Why? I'll even donate two hundred gold pieces to the Temple of Am 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 <laughs> Mate, you know what? That's actually one of the hardest Open things. Open your Oh, here, Garb, would you want me? I'll show you another thing. You'll find it funny. Because <laughs> I was having a hard time. So I have to... So I had to make... <laughs> So I don't, I don't even feel bad, okay? So uh, in the kitchen, right? In the kitchen, yeah. there is on one side the clear stations lies a massive tome, a, a book five inches thick with the names of gastronomically of the dead. Tome, without, it, 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 it's tome. Tell me, I don't care. Tome. Anyway, look, that'll be fixed and editing so well. This is, look, either way, either way, what do you what do you think of the encrusted bat wings of Wuhan? Yeah, do you like that? And we've also got the boiled lots of Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was thinking, like, okay, I need to come up with, like, like ho like horrible names, and it can't be, like, witch wart stew. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's saying, it's like something shit from, like, Banjo-Kazooie. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, how do I do this? And then uh, originally it was, like, <laughs> the harpy encrusted wings of Wu, but I was like, ah, fuck it, I already put in Bangladesh. I may as well just put in Wuhan, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Um, open in your Franco set quietly for a moment. Where rats are indeed most likely. I need I need a silver edged dagger. Get me one and I'll help. Ravis grimmed. Well, well, we'll do you better than a dagger. We'll commission you a custom made silver sword and resize a masterwork set of plate armor and shield for you. Glad to have you back with us for this. Soon the scattered sons were ready to launch their attack. None of them would be going. Ravis and Slab the Thieves, level 6 and 5 respectively. Genesee the Assassin, level 5. Kulth the Elven Courtier, level 4. And their henchmen, Rewalk. 
woke. We woke. We and woke. Omar, the fighters. We woke. Mate, did they just Urs- kind of the did they Ewok? Did they just kind of like the Ewok? <laughs> Fucking nub nub the goddamn yeah. henchman. Uh, well, uh, you, Ursus the lore master, Fing the assassin, Fing the assassin. Right? Yeah. Is, is he also Asian? Contemporary <laughs> member of Franco's the paladin level four. This is our assassin, <laughs> Fing. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Really? While more people... Is that a fucking Shimison playing? Really? Uh, while more people would be welcome, the Scattered Sons other henchmen were hired as specialists more than combatants, and more noise meant more likelihood to alert the cult. The company would instead hope to get the element of surprise to eliminate any potential numbers advantage held by the Were Rats. Were Rats. We're the rats. Rats. We're the rats. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, learning from the last time I'm, they I'm, tried to uh, cult. You know what? No, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not interrupting. Rats, Keep rats, going. Keep going. We're I've got a joke, rats. but I'm, it's going to do the whole video. I've already done that enough. Does it involve enough. New York? <laughs> yes. Anyway, keep going. It actually does. So, oh, my God. Literally, literally, everyone knows the joke. We're like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, learning from the last time they tried to raid a cult at night and found them all awake and active, the company plans assault to commence at high noon. Ah, yes. Gamers hate being awake at high noon. <laughs> 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 at, 11, at 11 in the morning, the Scattered Sons proceeded through Cy... Cy- I hate his name. Cy- like, I said some dumb names in my book, but fucking Cypheron to the shit gate. <laughs> one particularity of the shit gate was that it was located at almost the base of one of the city guard towers, so the company brought along several of the syndicate thugs carrying sacks of copper coins whose contents began throwing everywhere, causing a large commotion as a crowd quickly swarmed in to get what it, what it could. While the guards were distracted, the company slipped through the shit gate into the sewers. <laughs> Aragus opened the shit gate. It's a giant, like, brown fucking portal. Wait, you... um, <laughs> we're going to the fecal lands. Open the shit gate. <laughs> you know what? See if you guys don't carry the fecal lands at this point. I, there's something wrong with you because honestly, it's it's actually good. Yeah, it's I, a real I, gas. Yeah. I actually, I, I, I can't get over. It. Well, you know, that's the thing. well, that's the thing that gets me the most. I actually enjoy the book. It's actually genuinely like a well put together book, considering what the subject matter. You don't matter. get it, man. It's a fucking masterpiece, man. <laughs> it actually is put together really well. You're messing out. You're missing out, man. You, don't- you. shut up. <laughs> you wait for a guard, but I'm gonna make the cum realm. Oh, I'm so doing doing that. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, the cum realm. Yes. That's Jebediah, nice open the cum portal. <laughs> yes. I mean, uh, <laughs> the camera realm. No, 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 no. Yeah. Make, no, we're, we're moving on. Right, okay, I'll be making fine. my own donation to the temple for that. Franco's mutter from within the sewers. You look back at the surging crowd, merely giving alms to the poor while on your way to get rid of the city evil, reply Revis cheerfully. The paladin did not appear convinced. The trek through the sewers was uneventful until they had nearly arrived at the destination. A large, ominous patch of black mold completely coated the passage. <laughs> Fucking gamer, gamer layer. Oh, no. Made do you see gamer foot? Uh, yep. I see <laughs> yeah, do you remember gamer foot? Well, gold like, Those guys get like, like blood clots in their legs and it cuts off all the blood supply. Me, that's feet, not I swear good. to God. Me, that's not good. That's not good. The company did not like the look of it, but did but did not oh, on, did not want to waste time experimenting with it, and withdrew to approach from another tunnel they'd passed earlier. This way was also blocked by a ma- by a mass of sewage and <laughs> sh- shitters clogged. <laughs> no. <laughs> by a, ma- by a, ma- a mass of su- a mass of sewage. Oh God. Right. No, I, 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 I can like picture it. It's, t- it's fucking turning me. <laughs> you know, no, like, oh, God. Like- uh, no, th- no, thanks. Again, Ravis opted against the trying to pass through directly. He, tr- ugh, God, I, I, it's, it's like in my brain. No, you know, in there. You know, the worst one is the worst I'm one. Get a quick I, little drink of my, my fucking coffee. The worst one that ever happened to me was so, um, the heist of me and Magnar. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about it. No, I got to fucking talk. No, the heist of me and Magnar, and like, it's called, like, I don't know why, but the downstairs toilet just, like, clogs up really easily. And I think it's just the way the piping works because it doesn't have, like, a big enough. Yeah, it's not, it's angle. not your massive turds there, James. <laughs> no. The pipe's fault. No, no, meat, meat, here. Megan, oh. shitter's clogged. <laughs> yeah. yes, well, get yeah. the poo knife. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. poo knife, Oh, that was God funny. damn it, James, get your poo dagger. <laughs> no, it's not the poo knife. You need the poo masher. Have you seen that one? <laughs> the fucking, some cunt's got a fucking masher. A like fucking potato masher. You guys don't mash your gargantuan cheers? <laughs> no, you crazy bastard. Stop <laughs> eating corn. Stop eating corn. Look, okay, all I'm saying is the worst one I've ever seen was a bit of fucking, see what you're looking at, it. Like, you're looking into the eye of the storm, and you see a bit of sweet chili fucking go by. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are just. That's what did worst. Megan see in you, James? Holy <laughs> f- <laughs> good oh, God! Fuck! I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself, guys. Play the fecal. Either, it's good fun. I either you are rich or have a massive dick. One or the other, dude. Yeah. Well. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> sweet chili. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. See, now you can't stop thinking uh, about it now, though. I'm sure anyone that's watching this has actually managed to stay this long. They're like, they're like what the fuck is good? Fast forward. <laughs> As we, uh, we, we speak, go over, we freak. He tied he tied a grapple hook to a rope, and Omar the fighter flung into a mat into the. They're trying. They're going to scale the mass. Oh god! Uh, Again, rest the, against trying to bat pass through directly. He tried to grapple hook. He tied a grapple hook onto a rope, Me. and Omar the fighter flung it into the mass to snag a piece of timber. That's not timber, bro. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that, that's that, a that's not timber. That's a log. That, <laughs> that's a log of another color right there. <laughs> the company hauled on the line and dislodged the blockage. Within the mass that began to float their way, they saw over a dozen wriggling grub-like creatures, uh, rock grubs. Uh, uh, Thanks you know to what? the prudence Actually, they had sh- I've got a story for you, Garbu. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you know Why? What? Why does... Uh, okay. Okay. So, one of my friends... So, I did a lot to my engineer, right? Uh, one of my friends was in my tech class. He ended up getting his hands on an apprenticeship, yeah? And his apprenticeship involved in the, like, I don't know what he was doing, but he was in the sewers. And he said, like, in all the wrong places. And the, and the thing is, he said, like, honestly, like, for the age that we were, like, the pay that he was getting was insane. Like, he was getting, like, silly money. Like, even for apprenticeship standards. And, like, the year it was, it was, like, it was, like, five times minimum wage. You know what I mean? Which was just ridiculous. But he was quite literally up to his neck and shit. And he said the worst thing was his ma made him ham sandwich for his lunch and he opens him up and there's fucking sweet corn on it and he just threw them away he just, sweet corn? yeah there was sweet corn in his ham sandwiches and he just got, who the he fuck just, puts corn in sandwiches yeah yeah do you, not do you, you, you people man you but people but he just, just he just took one look at it and just like threw it away so he did Oh, I can't I can do it, it, Mom. I, I can't, can't do it. <laughs> I saw it in his. Fa- I can just see it in his face. Anyway, anyway, like that's that's enough uh, pig stories. Let's keep going. Corbu, why are you interrupting? Why are you why do you keep interrupting the the story just to talk? <laughs> I I hate you so much. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Let's bang this out. Let, you know the works on, against, let, We're fifty minutes let, in. We're fifty minutes in, and we've only done, done like two posts. <laughs> Let me, let me Look, just guys, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to talk about tanks, okay? But I felt bad. You motherfucker. Don't, you shut up. You shut your fucking mouth. I was talking about tanks. You said, no, girl, bro, we gotta finish this guy. Come yeah, on. I know, because I feel bad, because then people will be commenting and be like, oh, I'm just really looking forward to the story time. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, and you guys keep talking about turds and shit and corn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks to the prudence sh- they had shown, they had a little trouble tossing lit oil flasks to burn the grubs. A skeleton floating on the pile held a silver dagger and a small topaz in its hand, but Ravis forbid for the probing of the rubbish. They had to stop digging in the shit. Let's get out of here. <laughs> At last, back on the patch of dry land where they'd been informed a lair could be found, the party began to look for its entrance. Colth, as an elf, was naturally the one to find the lair's secret door, simply walking along the walls while everyone else was... What? Well, you can walk on walls. Yeah, well, well everyone do, do else you remember... was picking a portion to examine. So if you... In, like, Lord of the Rings, whenever they're going up that mountain, instead of going through Moria, <clears throat> like, like, this is supposed to be, like, walking on the snow, essentially. So that's why I was thinking there. Like, is he walking on the turds? So they fitted. <laughs> I mean, think about it. Same thing. <laughs> After the thieves listened to the door and Franco sends for evil, they found nothing and decided to open it. Behind it was a wall. Ravis and Slav gave a quick check for traps and then had Colt check the area in front of the door. And another door where they were, another door there certainly was. Again, uh, nothing was nothing could be heard or sensed behind it, but to Ravis, the secret door behind a secret door could only mean one thing. They found the lair and combat was imminent. It was time to make their final preparations. The party's casters got busy. Soon, Janice, Omar, Rewalk, <laughs> Ewok, and Franco's weapons had Bane Rune cast on them against Lycanthropes and Colt inspired courage. The company took their places in battle information in front of the door. Before they could open it, they heard a sound from the south where they'd come through. The scatter- they scattered sons. They These scattered sons began shifting their formation to meet the approaching creatures and then saw it was eight were rats. Each was transformed into rat man shape. Yes, 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 rat man. <laughs> and a large one. <laughs> And the large one leading them held a gleaming sword, all approaching openly with no effort of stealth. The were rat leader spoke to the, as a company came into view. So you finally come arrived. <laughs> the, the, they're scaving, bro. Come yeah. on. Yeah. So you finally arrived. You can join us the easy way or the hard way, but either way, the end result is going to be the same. I've seen this hentai before. <laughs> um, you know what? I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it from you. Oh, come on. Oh. Maybe we should hear the. Maybe we should hear hear him out, Slav again. Colt, knowing full well that the only transformation elves 
received from Lekin 3 is going from living to dead. Instead, instead answered for the group by shooting an arrow at the Were-Rat leader, which floated into the wall next to him. Have it the hard way, then, the Were-Rat said. The two groups rushed toward each other. So let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Slash shot his own arrow the, as the company began to charge southward to meet the Were-Rats on a strip of dry ground and was almost left behind from the group's movement as he stopped to pull another arrow from his quiver. Seeing... S- this system sounds a bit scuff. Seeing Slough exposed, rewalk quick hands, double-backed... <clears throat> double, double backed and placed himself between Slav and the four of the were rats, a sword ready. Now unable to reach Slav, they instead slammed in the rewalk, but their claws and sword had, no, had found no purchase on the nimble and thoroughly armored fighter, AC 11. Janus and Phoenix, it's probably fucking um, Thacko, wouldn't it, being AC 11? Um, I think so. I'm not sure how AC works in Axe, if I'll be honest with you. Although, mm. I remember Alex did it, it, say. It, 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 it seems like Thacko because it's such a low AC number. Yeah, well, Alex did say um, there's quite a few people on Warhammer Fantasy with Axe, so they do. Like, it's oh, pretty really? common, so like you know, I'm gonna use it. And, you know what I mean? Like it's it's probably this is probably written an adventure, but like you know, <laughs> copyrighted reasons, of course. Like Wrath Child and like Where God, you know what I mean? It's eh, it's cool enough. <laughs> Everyone knows we are. Um, right? <laughs> yeah. Janice and Fing joined Rewalk up north, while in the south, Umar entered a berserk stance, and alongside Frankos began a melee with the other four were rats. Revis, Colt, and especially the, unarm- the unarmored Ursus attempted to stay out of the way while looking for opportunities for an unengaged were rat to send an arrow into. Frankos' sword dealt grievous wounds against the were rats, and none could land a blow against him, AC 9. Almar was savaged by a pair of were rats, a claw piercing his neck, near max crit damage, but gave another but gave better than he got, cleaving straight through one and striking deeply into the other with great sweeps of his polearm, max damage roll cleave. Then a moment later he repeated the maneuver against the other two nearby, uh, blood streaming through the air around him, crit cleave, while the nearest were rats were now choking under blood. Oh, with the nearest were rats choking now choking under blood, Kulth and Ursus moved into poor healing magic into Omar, closing the wound in his neck, a pair of max CLW rolls. To the north, Ravis could see Rewalk standing like an invincible wall against the were rats, only landing an occasional blow amidst all his dodging, but driving them to a fury with their inability to do so much as scratch him. Slav joined the melee, but neither he nor the assassins had much luck in their own attacks. Both Omar and Franco's now able to join the fray. The company's victory seemed certain. Then Ravis heard something behind him. They <laughs> have a cane troll. <laughs> oh no! The secret door to the north of all the fighting was opening, and more were rats were pouring out of it to charge into the fray. Ravis decided discretion was far better, but was was the better part of valor, and dashed south out of the way. Seven were rats swarmed from the north, crashing into the ongoing clash and surrounding the company there. Another were rat wearing robes skulked at the edge of the melee while holding warp stones. While Rewalk yeah. seemed uncaring, Slav and the assassins were not nearly so well armored, and though Janus slew one of the new arrivals, Fing fell as a were rat bit out his eye. Oh. <laughs> oh. What? That's all very nice of the gop. So the Asian dies first, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Omar, now with a clear path to the enemy, leveled his polearm and charged headlong into the robe-wearing were-rat, his polearm punching clear through the rat wind's chest and into one of the were-rats in the melee. <laughs> so he went, he went, he went through the, the fucking, the fucking were-rat? Just, yeah. just go for it, man. Just fuck him up, you know? Frankos took Fing's spot in the battle line, and the melee continued. Suddenly, a loud, canting, chanting voice from... Was, yes, definitely chanting. Yeah. A voice from the north was heard. A sickly smell of ozone swept through the chamber, and, and most of the combatants froze. Swords or claws locked suddenly in place. Cone of paralysis in the, into the melee. Slav, Rewalk, Omar, Janus, for the were rats, and the sword wielding were rat all stood unmoving, with only Frank was able to fight alone against true against a trio of were rats. Ravis looked toward the source of the chanting and saw yet one more were rat to the north, this one dressed in a fine robe. The true leader of this pack of were rats, the big cheese. <laughs> I cast cheese to meet you. Oh. Yeah. I like that. I cast lactose intolerance. <laughs> no. It must have held back from the fighting until the company had been locked into melee and it could settle the battle in its favor with a single well placed spell. The were rat leader called out the company in a deep booming voice. Um, Elf, you have served my purpose well, so I have an honorable compromise. Just walk away. Leave the ensorcelled Oh, the ensorcelled ones to join our ranks as the, as the capable men have needed, and I'll spare you the rest of you. Just walk away. I will give you safe passage to the sewers. Just walk away, and there will be an end to the horror. By way of reply, Frankos reached over to grasp Omar on the shoulder and used his days lay on hands to break the paralysis, while Ursus and Colt ran forward to bring their own healing spells to bear. Very well, you had your chance. The three were-rats surged forward towards Frankos, and their leader began to gesture as his chanting began anew, readying to spell that would seal the company's doom. 
I saw the picture below this one of the, 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 the big cheese. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that's safe. The world... The, it's a talking rat. I'm losing no. my fucking mind. The world seemed to move in slow motion for Ravis. The were-rat grew larger and larger until it, was one, until it was all he could see. In its booming cant, all he could hear. In his whole life, he had never felt so calm, so distant. He could feel the pulse of his heart. He could feel the very grain of the bow he hit in his left hand. He could feel the burn of the arrow as it passed against his wrist, straight and true. The chant changed abruptly to a screech of pain as an arrow seemed to sprout from the were-rat's chest, and the world surged back into focus and speed. It had surely been a fortunate shot and fortunate timing, for he had only for he had been the only one who could act, and failure would have been death or worse for all of them. The revered mother had spoken truly. Califa smiled again upon him now. A single bow shot? Jesus. Mm. That's, that's, some, a, that's some low ass HP. Yeah, well, it is a deadly system, but it's weird, though, because, like, they have to have, like, low HP because it's also, like, almost like a borderline war game at the same time. Does that make sense? Oh, I see. You know? As the were rat leader began chanting again, Ravis and Cole sprinted forward. Each loosened arrow, and again, luck favored Ravis, the were rat shrieking in fury and pain as another silver arrow pierced its arm, disrupting its spell yet again. Omar and Frankos were locked with the were-rats in front of them, but Omar changed that as his polearm split the skull of the one in front of him. Ravish shouted and pointed, Omar, this one, kill him. Ursus risked a dangerous overcasting to cast on Janus that Healy needed to break free of the paralysis, and Califa must have smiled upon him too, for Janus's polearm swayed as his limbs unfroze. The were-rat leader fled for the secret door as his last unparalyzed minions were cut down by Frankos. Kulth and the berserk Omar chased after him, just barely able to catch up, but able. And with the were-rat hemmed in against the door, the layer door, Janice and Frankos also ran in to put an end to things, but the were-rat leader wasn't finished yet. If I had to die, I'm taking you with me, he roared as he began to cast a final spell. This time, Ravis's luck couldn't save them. He was around the corner with no shot to take. The air again filled with the stench of ozone. It's, ozone to me smells like fucking just clean. Ugh, yeah. I don't know what. What does like, ozone smell oh, like, like? Like, to me it smells like lightning. Ozone smell. <laughs> <clears throat> ozone has a pungent odor sometimes disguised as cr yeah bleach okay hmm with like uh lightning strikes and all uh, that. i wouldn't put like the lots and the smell of bleach together they're very clean yeah. rats you see oh right okay fair enough fair enough. here mate i've been getting fucking see my cats they constantly keep bringing in frogs like all the time it's getting out of hand they've brought in four frogs in total and they don't even like oh they <laughs> don't your picture yeah yeah they don't even like eat them or anything they just like father i brought you a frog why are you doing this i brought you a frog father i think they just like the way they move you know what i mean like i think they just think that they're funny so they they just bring them in and like they dun, don't hurt them dun, at all dun, i like the way you move <laughs> but you would frog, think frog, like you frog, know frog. like honestly like a frog with an amphibian like you know very, very delicate skin you know what i mean like a cat picking that up you would think would you would think they would leave a bite mark just by I'm an amphibian them in. you know <laughs> you ever watch rango or no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's been a while. Like, hey, fill, a hey, fill a reptile? I'm an amphibian. The no. fucking desert frog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, anyway, look, let's keep going. Let's anyway, find this thing anyway. before people are like, oh, why can you guys don't just... Jesus keep, Christ, keep, James. Keep, keep, to the, uh, <laughs> keep to the post, mom. <laughs> a blast of black sorcerers... Stop talking about frogs, James. Fuck. <laughs> a blast of black... A, a blast of black sorcerers energy caught all four, burning with malignant force. I cast Detroit. <laughs> the energy washed over them, through them, and then they were still alive. Barely, but just barely was enough. Sorcerer's Blast, everyone who would have died from a failed save made their save, though some of them just had one HP left. When a mage is trapped in a tight corridor with four skilled enemy fighters next to them and has failed to stop them with his magic, there can only be one real outcome. This is no exception. I cast Sword. <laughs> fucking nerd. You like that, do you? <laughs> you like that, do you? Yeah. Fucking calm down. Uh, Colt used his last spell to get Fing well enough to be walking... I thought that thing was dead. No, oh. looks like he's alright. He's messing with an eye, just. Um, would be walking wounded, and the remaining were rats were swiftly executed. A total of 17 slain, all told. Slav winced at the, at the sight of it once the spore went off, but not as much as Colth winced when he saw the human form of the were rat leader. It was the provost in charge of the elven text from the Tower of Knowledge, and his apprentice was the other robed were rat. Dun dun dun! <laughs> No. The <laughs> they were the rats all along. <laughs> oh no, shit! He he deliberately brought the party here to try to turn them into were rats to get skilled warriors and thieves in this cult. But then even but then even if he succeeded in infecting us, why did he think we join we agreed to join his cult? Travis wondered aloud. And all all he got was were, probably were shrugs. Most of the corpses were doused with oil and burned. Naturally, the scattered suns next to ransacked the Were-Rat's lair. The paladin was able to locate the cult's chaotic altar, which he was swiftly smashed and doused with holy water to remove its taint. As expected, the stash of elven texts turned out to be a lie, but the Were-Rats had been busy losing the people they'd been murdering at night. 
And there was a considerable amount of loot he hit to be had, 9,327 gold pieces of loot, a partial map of the Undercity, and a rarity most welcome for the Scattered Sun's magic items. Oh. A ring, a wand, a circlet, and a sword lay by the were and a sword held by the were rat champion. The circlet was recognized by the lore master as a circlet of comprehend languages. The wand's runes were then read as soon as the cult put the circlet on and revealed to be a wand of detect magic, and Revis took the sword to test out against a trio of giant rats in the lair, a sword plus one which was particularly easy to lay and critical hits with. After Janus made it clear so why, why are they still alive then? <laughs> After Janus made it clear that he wanted to get his pole arm, give it to someone who actually can consistently roll above a five on attacks, they gave the sword to Ulmar, along with the month's bonus paid to both him and Rewalk for exceptionally meritorious performance in the battle. What, not Fing? That's kind of fucked up. Uh, <laughs> Homeboy lost his eyeball! I know! Is there no, is there no uh, compensation pay? Uh, I know, right? See, no I, 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 I told you I should have joined the Adventurers Guild. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've got dental, you know. Yeah. Well, possibly of even greater importance was finding the Provost's journal detailing his own in the his own in the cult's activities and a pair of keys with it. I have a plan, and it ends with us getting loot. Ravis told the other three escape holders quietly, but we need to move fast tonight. Clear Clearly, this has put things good between him and that sweet goddess of luck, the true prize of his whole adventure. So it was time to do something that would take a bit of luck to pull off. Besides the plan for that night, he had plans for the next two best things they'd acquire today. Not the money, not the magic items, the journal, and the lair. Ravis had plans for those already. As they left the sewers loaded with what loot they could carry into the temple with Omar and Fing to spend some of their haul on spells to make sure they didn't have to have even have more whereas in the future, and to restore that horrific looking eye lost eye. There we go. Give Fing his eye back. Yeah. Rav Ravis told Franco's farewell. Pleasure working with you again. We probably won't would have made it without you. In fact, keep the armor and the shield as my thanks. Though I cannot say I approve of your ban, neither can I deny that you advance the cause of law, even if your reasons are self-serving. But you are an idiot if you think I don't know who you are, Ravis, and that you're one of a treason. <laughs> <laughs> but why you work with them that? You know what? You're not that good of a paladin then if you're going to get on like that. You know, you can tell like, the, the paladin said, I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just you fuck it. You know what? Fuck it. You do, you, like, you do more good than harm for now. Yeah. You can consider it my thanks for striking a blow to chaos. I don't report to your whereabouts to the authorities. Never crossed my mind you wouldn't know, said Ravis, with a smile that wasn't half as, as authentic as it looked. <laughs> Next up. All right. Get back. Next up. Okay. The Scattered Sons. All right. So I think this is the last story time, I think. Yeah. This, one? this is a terrible plan. This is this is a terrible plan, Ravis. It's going to work, Colf. Slob, tell him how bad this plan is. I think it's a great plan. One does not simply walk into the Tower of Knowledge and loot it. That's over. <laughs> right. Boromir, Boromir, <laughs> Boromir. That's oversimplifying things. We're going to get caught. We're going to get a big score. This is a job for, for just a few guys. That means just a few shares, and Janice is out after I told him there's not going to be any chance to stab something this time. Really got to wonder about that guy sometimes. Can't blame a man for loving his work. Look, just three shares, no upfront expenses. We walk and we walk out, and Nobody even knows how knows it went down. Come on, Colt. Are you in or not? If not the money, think about the magic items we might just overlook if not for you to point them out to us, or a spellbook that we just didn't realize had spells in it. The thought of a free spellbook for the taking more than anything had the elf begrudgingly agree. Ravis first called his thief henchwoman Itria to give him and gave her some detailed instructions upon which she dashed off. Then Slav and Ravis began going through the provost's journal looking for information about the interior of the Tower of Knowledge. Though their skills as thieves meant they could decipher the shorthand, there wasn't much in it that would be useful. There was quite a bit there that Ravis planned to use for another plan of his, but time was of the essence here. The only people who knew the Provost as apprentice were dead were the Scattered Sons. Every day they waited might change that and ruin the whole plan. Since Kolth had visited the tower before, they just had to lean on what he knew. He gave the interior layout as best he remembered. The short version was that they needed to get downstairs. They had two keys. They pulled the Provost's corpse. They had to just figure out where they went and when, and when the time came. Etria came back a few hours later. Yeah, the two stiffs are right where you said you stashed them. I got a good, I got a good close look. Shouldn't be no problem. Slav will have to be the guy in the fancy robe just by his height. You'll do for the other one, boss. Should even be able to use that. Should be, should even be able to use what they were wearing once the blood gets scrubbed out. I'll put a few stitches into the sash to cover the parts you sliced open. Hey, what about me? I'm not going as the only guy wearing his real face. But we, we'll make you an elf then. One with pointing your ears. <laughs> A, a, sorry, a different elf. A different there you go. Elf. Yeah. Racist. <laughs> um, it wasn't. <laughs> What all elves look like to you? <laughs> yeah. it, was an, <laughs> it was an hour before midnight when the three approached the tower disguised as finished. Walking in just like they owned the place, they looked for the big bronze gate Kulth had seen before. 
a pair of guards waited behind it, paying little attention. Here was where things could first go wrong. They had a large bronze key and a smaller iron key. Presumably, they let themselves with a bronze key simple enough, but the normal procedure might be different. There might be an unexpected greeting that would clue the guards in or even a password, or but they just have to chance it. They walked up, popped the key into the gate, and opened it up. And the guards didn't even look their way. Pulling the door shut and locking it behind them, the three burglars were now committed. They headed toward the center of the tower, casually looking for a way downstairs. First, they came across a library. Ravis wasn't especially interested in reading, but the books were, off, were often worth serious money. Then he saw they were all locked with the cases chained to the wall. He reminded himself the rule of the biggest import. Stick to the plan until the plan fails. Find the target. Don't get distracted. On the other side of the library was a staircase going up and down. The trio headed down and found a hallway with a large lock, uh, locked iron gate in the floor. Sorry, iron grate in the floor. Below it, the sewers. Slav stopped, held, held up the iron key next to the lock, then nodded. As a scattered son's master lock picker and qualified locksmith, that Slav was sure, then they had a match. But that was something for later. For now, the group followed the hallway as it turned, then came to a dead end. I'm positive he said his office was downstairs, whispered Kalt. It's probably behind a secret door, or these are all mages. Cast your detection spell, I've got a hunch. Kalth cast it and his eyes got wide. Not just one door, but there's a bunch of them. All to be, look to all be magically sealed up. And based on the pattern, there's a spot where one should be. That, that must be it. Some examination of the spot found a way to slide the door open. Now that's arcane lock spell had been ended up in, upon. The, now that's arcane lock spell had ended upon the caster's death. What a horrible design! <coughs> yeah. Pulling it, up, <laughs> pulling it shut behind them, the three immediately saw they come to the right place. On the wall was a life-size tapestry of the provost himself, <sighs> looking to be about worth 250 GP. <laughs> Make me a tapestry of my of mine self. <laughs> yeah. Rich fucking rich person shit right there. I mean, like, are, are you telling me, like, Garbu, let's say, let's say billionaire Garbu, are you telling me you're not going to have a blown statue of yourself? And a like, statue, but not, but not a tapestry. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't go for a tapestry, but like, you know, I, w I would go for like some meme tier statue of myself, just for the pure bond. I think it would be fun. <laughs> With a giant cut piece. <laughs> yeah, hell uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> the statue's made. The statue's made to scale. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So. Um, all right, even worse to see was a larger tapestry that had to be worth four times as much, but also four times as big. About a dozen glass jars with embalming fluids, snakes and frogs inside were on the shelf. I see our cats have been here, James. Oh. <laughs> Father, I brought you a frog. <laughs> About a dozen stoppered bottles of blood-colored fluids, each labeled lycanthropy on another, and yet another shelf with vivisected frogs. What? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> fucking f a dozen li lichen f <laughs> lichen bottles like yeah. mm, yes i like this flavor right but not everything within the office was so hard to carry colt began checking over the seven foot tall bookshelf filled with various scrolls and books for what was valuable and, and then a locked chest that held 460 platinum pieces worth 2300 gp colt didn't take long quit it i can't see stop oh. what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> Colt didn't take long to make his assessment. We take all the books. They're worth like three and a half thousand gold between them, plus some notes that the guy made personally. I don't see any of them that won't sell. Spread them out so we have like eight books each and it shouldn't look too odd. The two thieves quickly, bra quickly bagged the books while Colt checked the room for secret vaults or panels that might hide more loot. Okay, we're looking at about six grand here. That's a nice, nice night's work, gentlemen. Let's get out of here nice and easy. Getting out was even easier than getting in now that they knew their way. The guards, again, didn't even give them the time of day as they unlocked the bronze gate, locked it behind them, to head it out. They safely got back to the Scattered Sun's headquarters and divvied up the loot, 6,050 GP total, which meant that each got a nice cut of, tw of 2017 GP for what was possibly the easiest, quickest heist they've ever pulled. Though Ravis paid Itria a henchman's share from, the, from his own cut for preparing disguises, even if she hadn't come along for the heist proper. Always best to let your people know that you appreciate their work. Yeah, I mean, like, like you know... And yet James never pays me. <laughs> <laughs> you get paid next week, sure. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. You made me a star. Okay, gonna, I made you a star. I'm going to be a star, Garbo. You're going to be the best star. You're going to be the... You're going to be number one. You're going to be number one. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. <laughs> Um, it was only after Cole started whining about the lack of spellbook and how they really needed to track down the Provost's house to pay a visit there and find out one find out before the other members of the tower realized they was dead and beat them to it that Rabbis realized something. Oh shit, when we let the anyone remember to close the secret the close the secret door <laughs> we had in fact we had not in fact remembered. Oh wait, this, this uh, is okay. part of that. So that Yeah, that nah, is. Nah, nah. Yeah, that was oh, it is? I think so. Oh I see. Is it? So basically it's him talking about like, you know, what what they did. They had, oh, they had a right. sap and a dagger and that was it. So they went right. in and went out. Alright, okay, fuck it. Um Revis had been hiding out with a bounty on his head as a as a one of fugitive for a little while now, with not with only a couple of breaks to stretch his legs and nearly get killed or worse. 
But after the Scattered Sons put the cult, the Horn Rat, to the sword, Ravis had found something very interesting in the pile of looted goods. The journal of the cult leader, a provost of the, a provost of the Tower of Knowledge. It detailed his obsession with obtaining immortality to the point of using black magic and even turning himself into a were rat and forming a were rat cult so that they could search for ways into the nether city. Ravis could hardly believe the journal in the, the first time he read it. The provost had just written everything down. Step one, don't write down your crimes. <laughs> um... Ravis was hardly someone to have a problem with illegal activities, but to actually create to, to actually create incriminating evidence on yourself like this. Well, the provost had died before his detailed collection of self-incrimination was ever was able. Uh, uh, well, the provost had died before his detailed collection of self-incrimination ever was able to trouble him. Ever was able. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I have a seizure. <laughs> um, the journal had a few worthwhile tidbits in it, such as mention of a storied treasures beneath the solar citadel, which somehow Ravis had missed hearing about in all his time of, in Syrophon. But overall, it was mostly the rantings of a madman willing to go to any, willing to do anything to figure out how to live as long as an elf. Which uh, meant it was perfect for Ravis's purposes. I mean, like, you know, all you gotta do is, like, drink the god. Like, you know, that seems to be, like, the go to for her. <laughs> you, 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 you would think he would just, you know, like, be a vampire. That seems yeah. so much easier. Just like, you know, drink the blood. Maybe, maybe drink some mercury. You know? What is it with, like, Chinese emperors? Like, what, honest to God, what was it with Chinese emperors? They all just seemed to be absolutely incompetent and insane. Like, you know, just across the board. <clears throat> like, I'm, I'm like... I mean... The more have you seen the like, f like just say foot bindings. So I gotta say, like, I want your feet as small as possible. Like, ah, I see. So you're retarded. Like the more, the more I read about ancient China, the more I'm honestly shocked that it's formed into like China. Do you know what I mean? As a whole, like, it just does not make sense because I, 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 there's just too many emperors that are just fucking leadhards, for lack of a better word. You know, it's just they're they're just bad. And like, honestly, like, you know, see. You know what pits me off reading about the Chinese? It's like, you got fucking daimyos, so you got all these, like, wee fucking bitchy princesses and queens and all that, and then you got fucking <laughs> eunuchs, which are just, like, dickless freaks, and they're all fighting each other, and it's like, yeah, I, I, I'm i sorry, you can call me a... You Bunch call, of dickless freaks fighting yeah, each other. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, honestly... You honest, dickless freak! Me, honestly, though, like, you know, people, people say, it's like, oh, James, you know, you're very, like... You're very Eurocentric. It's like, yeah, I'm. I'm not sorry about that, guys. I'm. I'm, I'm really not. Like, you know, I've just like honestly. You're very Eurocentric. Uh, uh, I've tr I've tried to lead as much as I can about China, and it's just. Did you me. know the European prefers European culture? <laughs> Fucking crazy. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you know, there's going to be someone in the comments being like, "Well, actually, James, you know, there is." Look, uh, there, there, actually, James, push, I'm a huge China boo. <laughs> Look, there is some stuff interesting in the Far East, there is, but, like, the vast majority of it is, like, uh, can you guys, like, stop being retarded for five minutes and, like, actually be, like, confident? We ate all civilians. <laughs> Chinese victory. Yeah, or you know what it is? Like, honestly, it sounds like made up half the time when you're, like, reading Chinese I, I sources. Know, right? Because it's, like, oh, yeah, like, like... This can't be real. Yeah, like, like 50 billion peasants died this year. It still worked out fine, though. To total Chinese victory. It's, like, what the fuck? You know, it's like, I don't know, the populations always seem over... You know what it is as well? Like, the Chinese like to brag about how many people die. It's the same way, like, it's the same way, like, Russians. Russians seem to think it's, like, a good thing. It's like, oh, mate, fuck, and, like, we lost, like, 30 million or whatever. It's like, yeah, that's that's not a good statistic, man. You're, <laughs> that's like, not great. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, you really, like, let's be serious. Like, I think most people would agree that, like, the less people you die, like, die, like, the more you kill the other team better less of your team die that you know what i mean it's like uh, i don't know i don't know like, let's just keep going dimitri uh, why the fuck you like this <laughs> you yeah. like dick. hold on let me just um, zerg rush this shit real quick yeah, i know although wow we, double dubs way to go and non yeah oh, yeah uh, anyway anyway enough look, let's keep going let's keep going so ever since the stars are like, young jesus christ shut the fuck up james ever Aaron, since the stars are young did you see, you see that uh, immediately no. immediately cuts me off no oh, guard, bro. Yeah. did you see did you see that one that this one's fucking gone missing. <laughs> what do you call them? What? Yeah, you know the you know the Garper. Is that a is, is that a Russian or is that a no? Ukrainian? It's a Ukraine. You know, have you not seen this one? The spokes one, Ashton, whatever you call them. Me, you, you tell know, me you don't see this one. Like 
he should at least try to pass. My God. Yeah. Well, either way, yeah. They've like you know they're not on they're not on Twitter anymore. So I don't think it's do I, I don't think Ukraine is doing very well. That's why I gotta say anyway. If they're if they're Twitter down, I think they might have got the sack. So yeah. Or that, or are dead. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, that that is also a high possibility. Either way, it's not looking good for the Ukrainians at the moment. Has it ever? It's been an uphill <laughs> battle for those fucking dudes. Jesus Christ! Yeah, like, yeah, we're, 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 so we're being invaded by Russia. Shit! <laughs> like, like the KDR is insane, and they're still losing. That's, that's how that's how rough it is. Like, oh, buddy, like we ki we've killed so many Russians, but there's so many more being thrown. I don't out. know. I don't know. Like, let's keep going before they end up being like, oh, we the story time, guys. Like, okay. We'll just keep feeding Ukrainians <laughs> Abrams tanks every day. Oh, oh boy, I love my tax dollars going to waste on this shit. Ever since this starts a young footpath. Ravis has been ex exceptional for having precise, steady hands. Whether it was disarming a hair trigger trap or drawing a map perfectly to scale, Ravis was the man for the job. He hadn't had needed to make a map in, in some time, but it was those same exacting, unwavering hands that now took a quill in hand. Not as good as an artist, but good enough in the in, in this case. The sun was nearly set when Ravis came out of his room, triumphantly holding a, the Provost's more journal, the finished journal. Oh, the finished journal. <laughs> <laughs> the journal that contained in its final pages the account of the Provost Mart of the Provost hearing of a tomb with the secrets of it to immortality kept within the pre prefect's office of his black magic used on a thief to force him to find that book and of how he raged when, the, when that thief was caught in the act. All of it carefully detailed in the Provost's handwriting and freshly dried ink. <laughs> huh, that's handy. I will make it legal. Uh, Jonas met him in the hallway. Ravis, just wait until you hear what I discovered by spying on the Prefect's younger brother. Colth, we might not want to demand hush money from someone so... Wait, what's with that smile? Jonas, today, rather than demand a gift to the Prefect's brother, we are going to give him one. That blackmail you found, we will clean it up as a small act of kindness to him, and we will present his journal of the deceased provost to his brother as a small act of kindness to us. The next day, an officer of the city watch came by the Scattered Sun's headquarters. Have any of you seen Ravis Faley's around? Nope, replied. Slap replied from his stool. His stool. I hope it's a seat. <laughs> Like, well, English is so made. fucked, dude. Stool. What kind? Yeah. <laughs> From his wooden stool or his sloppy stool? Completely completely deadpan. The officer raised an eyebrow, clearly not convinced. Well, if you do see him, tell him his charges have been dropped and he's a free man. If I ever see him, I'll let you know. I'll let him know. Ravis was so thrilled with this turn of events, he could he could hardly decide how to how, how best to celebrate. There are so many things he'd been missing out on while in hiding, he finally settled on a nice, simple kidnapping. Aw, oh, again? Are you serious? Well, time to celebrate, grab, <laughs> grab his chloroform bottle. <laughs> a mere... <laughs> A mere week later, he had a 5,000 gold piece of ransom in hand, enough to get to level 7. He promptly spent well over half of the ransom on commissioning the finest stone carver in Syrophon. It was time to patronize the arts. Ravis ordered the craftsman to make a large marble pillar with a base relief carving of the scattered suns in the middle of, the, in the middle of destroying the Cult of the Horned Rat to decorate a prominent intersection within the Plaza District. You can come by the headquarters to take our likeness for whenever it is convenient. Our men will be expecting you. You get all the notes, read them back to me. The most prominent part of the piece should be you about to shoot an arrow into the were-rat leader while he's writing a spell. Mr. Jonas should be slicing a were-rat in twain with a pole arm. Mr. Rewalk should be holding back half a dozen were-rats with a shield. <laughs> As you can hear, Mr. Phalus, I have everything down as you just described, even the part to make Mr. Cole's likeness with point to your ears. Oh. Good, he'll appreciate that. <laughs> Need to step away for a while, yada, yada, yada. Uh, keep it. Yada, yada. Uh... Okay, okay, all right. Wait, is that is, it? Is, is it done? Is it done? Is that it? My is God. That, did it finish? Oh, oh, oh there we go. Wait, there's more. Ah. Word of Ravis's impossible escape spread among the underworld. A number of skilled thieves showed up at the Scattered Sun's hideout looking to get hired. The Syndicate dedicated its time to start plussing up numbers. Ravis also decided they needed to become... They needed someone with a better head for numbers for some of his future plans. Spent some time interviewing for a very important position. Uh, a very important position. A bookie. Hey. One who was happy to keep his mouth shut. With <laughs> Sopranos play softly. Yeah. Within the last few scores and a couple of decent months of hijinks for the syndicate, Ravis ha had been stacking up the wealth. With the bookies' help, he started putting together a few business enterprises to put these to good use. 
The first, expanding the syndicate's operations with a second hideout, a conveniently located warehouse that gang could, that, that the gang could turn to a tavern and gambling den after they helped convince this previous owner to sell. Expanding would crank up the chance for heat coming up from the other syndicates, so the wannabes from before got hired to buff out the numbers and supplies to muscle. The second, supplying illegal contraband, specifically poison. By putting up discreet bounties for trained venomous creatures from giant snakes to giant spiders and even a carrion crawler, Ravis secured a source that could be dangerously milked every few weeks. I, 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 the word milked always like yeah. It's, it's, I, I, I know what they mean, but it's like, but like, it's just. It's just, it's just a word. I mean, it's kind of like the word moist or succulent, like well, milked. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put this up on screen for you, Garbko. <laughs> I've already seen that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, guys. I can't HIV try. positive, huh? Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. I can't, I can't put it's just as good as mother's milk. Okay, you're HIV man tit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, normally, finding a place to put this little shop of horrors would have been a serious problem, but that second hideout, you turn that shit off right now. I'm <laughs> fine. That. But that second hideout having picked up for us. <laughs> it sat directly over the now empty were rat den. A little bit of work let the scattered suns have a hidden trap door that dropped directly into the underground lair, a perfect site to run from the operation from within a city without a law finding it. Getting the venomous critters was a plant was a pain and cost a cool thirty one hundred GP, but the bookies numbers showed that they'd completely recouped their costs within only a few months and we pre profit from there out. Ravis's venture Ravis's venture henchmen got busy selling poison to criminals throughout the Syrophon, and when that market was saturated, Ravis had them start riding around the best of the borderlands to sell it in smaller settlements as well. Once it paid the cost of it of its investment off, being the borderlands main poison supplier would let Ravis pull in eighteen seventy GP every month. Ravis had more ideas though, and since the rest of the PCs had chipped in for buying the new hideout, he still had enough to cash to get them rolling. Um, the next businesses, the next business was setting up a, subs a subsidiary of entering party. Yeah, there we go. Get the, get the dental. Ra Ra <laughs> <laughs> Get the icon. Ravis pay for a bunch of for a bunch of pro criers to shout the praise of the scattered suns and, rid and ridding Syrophan of cults and were rats. Um, soon enough, enough fresh young adventurers looking to make it big like the scattered suns adventuring party were signing Ravis's contracts of employment. The new faces wouldn't be joining the scattered suns directly; they'd be forming the three glories of adventuring party working underneath it. The scattered suns would supply them with intel, set them up set them up with site specific useful equipment like holy water or poison arrows to improve their odds. Guarantee they got paid at least enough for the living expenses each month and would pay out for the death and it would Ouija. pay out for death and dismemberment. Ouija get back in the KG. Oh my god, yeah. imagine being a, a maid. I'm, honest to god, like, okay, serious question. Why would anyone choose to join an adventure in gold instead of just doing it themselves? I'm a self employed adventurer, thank you. Yeah, like, no, but like straight up, like, what is what what would you gain from it? Like, maybe they set up contracts for you, maybe it's easier to find work. But, like, they're still going to take money off you. And then, like, I'm going to assume you're going to go accept like, pay. Like, you don't organize, like, how much the pay is. for. Like, it depends on the setting, actually. Uh, um, suppose, now, yeah. usually, on a lot of settings, the, the guild takes a percentage they of the... No, no. I already yep, pay tax so, in real life. I'm not so paying. I am not paying tax in my RPG games. That is just so no. As an aside, as an aside, most guilds, again, again you know, setting dependent will... They are an aggregate for missions and as a place that was also like bunker and like they have bunks and they have kitchens and they have you know equipment and all that different stuff they're kind of an aggregate for all these missions and when the adventurer gets a mission from the guild they go out complete the mission bring it back they get a percentage of the reward in a way so eh. and i and i believe in some settings is that like it's only that so like the low, lower level like piss ant quest have yeah. a much lower percentage than like the higher quest. So yeah. it's one of them. Uh, um, I don't know, man. Pantax still like it's, the idea of Pantax in a fantasy game was just like, don't kill me, don't for, hurt me. So all for the low, low cost of half their net profit. See, they're they're as bad as the fucking guild. Yeah, they are. Believe yeah. it or not, Ravis was actually offering them a fairly reasonable deal, considering the upfront costs he would be footing for the party and the boost that his intel and equipment gave their chance of survival. The money and chance for magic items they bring back if they didn't die was the only one factor in Ravis's calculations. Even more important was developing a useful bunch of combat-hardened employees who could ask for various jobs. Ravis still wasn't done, though. In the previous months, he and Janus had kidnapped several other people. <laughs> a tower of the knowledge mage... 
They just keep snatching up folks, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And the head clerk of the Solar Citadel. Oh, me, you're going me. to jail. You're 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 not going to jail. You're going to hell. You're going to, you're going to hang, brother. <laughs> yeah. First time. <laughs> yeah. The Sy- the Syrophon elite were starting to panic about the surge of kidnappings and were paying out for guards and other protection, so the scattered sons decided to shift their hijinks for a while. But Ravis got to thinking: if people wanted protection, what could be better than <laughs> he's he's creating a problem? Not <laughs> he creates a problem. Not, hey, here's a solution for that problem I created. So oh basically, um, he he's started bond breeding then. giant dogs. Oh. Yeah, so basically, he 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 he's, he's breeding giant protection dogs and selling them, <laughs> selling them to the to, to the people who's trying to kidnap. Um, <laughs> and if those guards was and, and if those guard dogs considered the scattered sons to be their playmates and treat givers while they were being trained as pups, he could effectively get paid <laughs> twice for the same scam. Oh, mate, that's bad. So the dogs have a kill code. Like, <laughs> hey, who's your, who's your favorite guy? Oh, it's my fucking friends. Yo, yeah. what's up? You know? <laughs> oh my god, that's brutal. <laughs> Funny, like, Christ. you know what? I'll give him credit, that is creative, I will say. I'll give that's him- That's fucking evil. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but like- So, so while the Scattered Sons Adventuring Company was considered a legitimate business under the law, that was unlikely to hold up for too long if someone was digging into Scattered Sons' criminal syndicate activities. And all of the Ra- and all of Ravis's other ventures were tied to it. He needed to something to stay- that He needed something that stood alone, an actual legitimate business that could just operate as an income stream for him. He decided to get into arbitrage trading. The problem was he didn't actually know much about the demand for goods around the borderlands. He hadn't cared, and even his adventurer merchant henchman hadn't really had the chance to learn all those details. He offered to go out to go out and learn what was good to buy and sell, though it would like though it would likely take months of hustling rumors out of merchants at, at cities all around the region if they wanted to have a really a, a really choice route. Ravis had a better idea. He was a thief. Hell, he ran a whole syndicate for twenty with twenty five thieves under under him. Why did he steal the information? <laughs> yeah, like what are you doing? So that month, several thieves did spying hijinks against the Cypheran Merchants Guild. Two of them were successful and copied down key ledgers containing the entirety of the guild's notes on local prices for goods at each of the settlements within the region. Ravis and his bookie then poured over the data and found the ideal trade route to set up. A couple of fast ships between Syrophon and Siadanos along the river would be ideal to take advantage of price fluctuations without oversaturating the market. Repurposing a light galley from its duties as a warship to haul cargo in its below decks troop bay instead should work out super, uh, superbly. So basically, they get a captain, they get a boat. Yeah. Um, Putting so, together a team, oh, you know? Yeah. We're putting together a team. So in the end. So Ravis ended up getting two ships built in the end, with the other PCs chipping in 4,000 GP each and then getting paid 400 GP per trade run as investors. Uh, and then scroll down, see if there's anything else here. Please tell me we're done, I beg you. <laughs> it's been so long, I just want to talk about tanks. <laughs> yes! Yay! Yes! Let's go. Story is officially over. And uh, in the end, everyone clapped. <laughs> yeah, and then in the end, he finally worked out how to make a legitimate business. Kind of, maybe out of kidnappings. <laughs> yeah. So many kidnappings. Oh, uh, you know what? I, you know what? I do. I, I do really want to. The problem I've got, like with Axe, is I don't feel like it's the type of game I could DM. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it's very different from what I'm used to normally playing. And I would love to play a game with a lot of like in-depth downtime activities. But it's just not something that I would be able to love myself, and I don't. I would get so bored, like, oh, you're, you're so cool. Uh, 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 kidnapping, just roll for it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, like there's so little to work with. And people are like, guard bro, you're just lazy, guard bro. Fuck it. But it's just it'd be, it'd be so annoying because you gotta manage all this shit. Yeah, I think there's a yeah, lot of I have thirty-seven thousand NPCs. Fucking, you know, like, god damn it, man. I don't know if there's a way to streamline it, but I'm still waiting for the. I got the PDF sort of, but I need to wait for the book to actually come in to like really like see how it runs. You know what I mean? But look, we'll just find out. We'll find out. So, Garbo, do you want to talk about tanks? Will we do? Will do you want to? Do you do you fancy? Do Fuck you... yeah, I do. Okay, look. Okay, let's do that then. Um, I don't know which video will be up first. Whether well, I put the tank one up before this one, and we'll just hear the lean. Oh, we'll find out. Look, we'll find out. Right. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always. Look, check out Garbu stuff. Garbu uh, is Veil Riders, is Emily Blondes. Look, you can find them all linked on my website. My website. Uh, my website. <laughs> my website. The same thing. Uh, I need it. You know what, Garbu? I need to set you up like a proper section on the website. But the problem Again. is, I do need to sort you out with like a proper section though, because like I do have you set up where I've got you like linked at the top. But like you know, eh, it could be better and like. 
The it's no problem. I'm used to being your second, your, your your second thought there, James. It's uh, it's well, kind of a kind, well, of, kind of who I am. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, the problem is it's setting it up because I don't really want to be handling other people's money. You know what I mean? That's the biggest yeah. problem well, I've got. Just just, just 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 the links are fine, dude. Yeah, cause... well, I've got the links up there for you. Anyway, yeah. anyway, what? I'm still waiting on the bastard princess. It should Why be in soon. James never love me. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, anyway, is there anything else worth bringing up? We're, I'm sure we're going to talk about this in the tank video. Anyway, in the tank video oh yeah fuck yeah dude because <laughs> i because i got an image for you to show all the boys and girls okay yog day brums yeah okay. <laughs> right okay anyway look hope you guys enjoyed this one let us know what you think it's been a very long time since we've done it honestly how long is this video like it's gonna be like three hours long um so like it's if, it, it is a long boy if sure. you enjoyed this one you got like like it, share it with whoever you think would be interested. Like, all that sort subscribe, of stuff. comment down below. Comment down below. Oh, you know. Comment down I, below. I, I, I fucking hate all this type of shit on. You know you, you like it. You, you know you want to comment. Tell me how gay I am. You know. You know what always annoyed me was I always hated it when people would say, "Oh, remember to subscribe." So I never did it, and then like I tried it for like a month, so I did, and it was like automatically. It's like, oh my god, what, I you have to say it, and I don't know. I hate it that it works. I hate that you have to say it because. It actually hey guys, does work. Uh, please comment down below. Please. I need to buy food later. <laughs> no, please no. give me give me the, the, the interactions. Nah, just fucking sign up on the gum loot instead, and we get to talk about. Oh, like... geez, Rick, they're not commenting down below. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Jesus look. Christ, Morty, they never comment down below. Oh. <laughs> anyway, look, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you managed to stay to the end, you know what? Because we don't do story times all that often, and uh, I don't really know what else to go with that. So yeah, I'll see you guys. Bye, bye. Yep, bye, bye.